uh, going to be a fun night of basketball here as we call this one from our Outsiders broadcast booth. And this should be Nazium Chanute will play in this season. Ten as it did Tuesday night in Labette County. Kansas City, T-Mobile Center. <laughs> it's <laughs> obviously very broad. I'm saying it's much more open. There's the crowd's not right on top of you. Heck, on this side, there's no crowd. It's the teams, uh, the scores table, and us and some administration and uh, police officers hanging around just in case Jay does anything stupid later. That's uh, possible. Yes, here. So, Jay here in our Commercial Bank pregame show, uh, tough loss Tuesday night at Lebec County. Quick turnaround, though. You That's right. Three days later, you get to go on the road again and take on a, a 5'8 point guard and – Hearing that, of course, 5'8", point guard, that, that's a tall point guard, especially uh, considering Chanute, not a lot of size on their side of the ball. Right, you know, and Chanute tonight, I think, is going to have to do a better job of attacking the basket. Uh, they shot 24% Tuesday night. As, what's up, Coach? I see Coach sneaking up on us. Coach, you're, you're fine. You, <laughs> you do your thing, Coach. <laughs> coach checking in on us as we get started here tonight. But, yeah, we saw it in the fourth quarter, and even Coach mentioned it in our postgame talk that that fourth quarter was big. Chanute outscored Labette in the fourth quarter of that game, and it was because they were able to get some looks inside. It was Tyra Bogle being aggressive, driving to the basket and getting some layups. It was Jalen Smith being aggressive at the basketball goal and getting some shots up at the rim. And it was even uh, – Kelsey Havlin made a drive and wasn't afraid to go at the basket and make something happen. So uh, that's something we want to see from the get-go here tonight and not wait until the fourth quarter to try to be aggressive. Oh, absolutely. Take the ball to the basket and see what happens. The worst that happens, you get it put on the free throw line, you get to shoot free throws. I love your insight, Jay. Short, sweet, to the point. Hey, always. Get to the line, shoot free throws. Uh, be like K-State was Tuesday night. You see that line? I did not. K-State beat Texas. I'm a big K-State guy. K-State beat Texas. You're an OU guy. You like that. Thir 116 to 103. K-State was 31 of 33 from the free throw line. See, 31 free points with no <laughs> clock running. That's a that's a very high percent. It was like 94, 95%. So, yeah, do do that tonight if you can. Uh, get to the line. Earn those, those free throws. I mean, that's what they are, free throws. Um, hopefully they've done some work and figured out a way to hit those free throws and can make that a big point of their game tonight. Yeah, because, oh, sorry. Go, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Well, though, you know they settled for a lot of outside shots and 7% from behind the arc, that's that's not a good percentage. A team that they, they will live and die by the three-point shot on Tuesday night, unfortunately. They died by that three-point shot. We're going to send it back to the studio for two minutes here in our Commercial Bank pregame show. When we come back, We'll have a little bit more before we get to starting lineups. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School, and teams still out here getting warmed up as they do before every game, and I'm uh, just kind of keeping an eye on it. Both teams very loose out here tonight, it seems. Pittsburgh not afraid to shoot the long ball we've seen in warm-ups. Been fairly successful, and Chanute good up, getting up some pretty good shots here tonight as well, so I think we're going to be in for a good battle here tonight, Jay. Very well could be. I mean, it might be a long-range contest, too, with both teams. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's not. It, it can end in a high-scoring game, or it can end in a severely low-scoring game uh, if you shoot 7% from behind the three-point line. So hopefully uh, we'll see some success out of both teams and just see a good, good matchup here tonight as Chanute over there working on those free throws. I guess they're going to take a page out of your book here tonight, Jay, and rely on that free throw shooting we'll see it should be a fun one 
do want to see if they're going to do the national anthem before the girls game or the guys game. Again, we've had it every which way so far this season. Well, last, Tuesday night we didn't even have the national anthem. They did it before the guys game. Remember okay. the flag came down? Oh, that's correct. I'm, you you I'm, even mentioned it. Yes. I'm. So it looks like they're going to wait for the guys game to do the national anthem. So we'll send it back to the studio for two minutes. And when we come back, we'll have your starting lineups. You're listening to Chanute Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School. Starting lineups are out. Bear with me because they didn't give me a paper lineup tonight. Everything's going to be done electronically, so I will do my best with this one. For Pittsburgh, it's going to be number one, Jackie Hall. Number two, Desi Gorley. Number four, Anna Jorge. Number 20, Gabby White. And number 22, Alyssa Hotsey. I hope I said that name right. I think they said Holtz. Holtz? That, there's no way that's right. But All right, there's no L in that. Well. <laughs> for Chanute, it's going to be number four, Peyton Shields. Number five, Preston Keating. Number 24, Tyra Bogle. Number 42, Jalen Smith. And number 44, Kearney Fulmer. So a small lineup for Pittsburgh overall. However, they do have bigger guards and jump ball will be won by the Blue Comets goes into the hands of Tyra Bogle she'll give off to Peyton Shields so swinging around to Keating Keating dribbles around the top of the key now swings it over to Bogle good defense being put on by the Purple Dragons here early as Keating with it gives it back to Peyton Shields Fulmer was driving, then kicked it out to Smith. Now back outside to Fulmer. Cross-court pass, dangerous pass. Ends up in the hands of Keating. It's now a 35-second possession. Shields trying to drive, gets cut off. Good defense there. And shot put up by Jalen Smith. That's missed. Rebound goes to Pittsburgh. I think that Fulmer could have drove that to the basket there. And again, if you're watching on the live stream, you'll see on this end of the floor... Not the best view in the world, but it is what it is. Quick foul on Pittsburgh, a moving screen. That was called on Ana Jorge, the freshman who's starting for Pittsburgh in this game. Pressure being put on 
by the Purple Dragons. And Chanute doing a good job of beating that pressure. Uh, pass back to Peyton Shields and I think they'll finally have an opportunity to set up their offense. Backdoor pass goes to Keating. It's stolen away by Pittsburgh. They've got a fast break opportunity one-on-one. -on -one. Shots missed. Good defense there by Peyton Shields. And Jalen Smith there tracking behind to pull in the rebound. Now stolen away by Jorge. And Jorge can't control it. Pittsburgh going to settle down now. And never mind, they throw it right back to Chanute as Jalen Smith steals that one away. So 6.20 to play here in the first quarter. We're still scoreless. Peyton Shields driving, stops, falls away, and that one rattles in and out. And no points for either team to this point. Pittsburgh quickly the other way, and a quick travel as that was Alyssa Hoyts. We're going to say Hoyt. Hoyts? Okay, you say Hoyts. That Hoyts? Good. I don't know. That's a tough one. That is. Uh, hey, that was a good drive by Peyton down there on the offensive yeah, end. She, uh, everything went right except the ball going through the cylinder. A quick reach in there. And Desi Gorley going to be the guilty party. It's the first on Gorley, the second team foul for Pittsburgh. Inbound goes to Peyton Shields. Again, pressure being applied here by Pittsburgh. Now they'll double team Peyton Shields. She's trying to dribble out of it. Going to have to pass out of it at some point. And Coach Fox going to take a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll take the 30 seconds with them. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School, to have a name correction. Number 22, it's Alyssa Hotze. Thank you to the administration here at Pittsburgh for assisting us in that one as we were just butchering that young lady's name. Nice pass on the inside. Peyton Shields seeing the entire floor. She finds Kearney Fulmer under the basket for an easy lay-in. Good job there, Peyton, looking inside. 2-0, Chanute on top, 5-15 to play here in the first quarter. Pittsburgh now trying to direct the offense around. As White has it, she goes into the corner to Hall. Hall, cross-court pass into the hands of the young freshman. And Ana Jorge makes a freshman mistake. And she shuffles her feet and turns the ball over. So possession back to the Blue Comets. Peyton Shields with it. She's trapped once again and nearly stolen away. Late camera work. We're going to get some of that tonight as our <laughs> cameraman's a little slow. It's me. I'm the cameraman. So Jorge going out of bounds with the basketball. Chanute will keep possession, which is exactly what Jay wanted to see happen That's tonight. That's exactly what I wanted to see happen tonight. Were you in the locker room earlier? No, I was not. That's good. <laughs> First free throw attempt for Shields. And nothing but the bottom of the net on that one. Didn't even graze the rim. Uh, the free points with no clock moving. Absolutely. Peyton, a very good free throw shooter. 3 nothing. Blue Comets on top. 451 to play in the first quarter. Shields, second free throw up and in as well. Make it 4 nothing, Blue Comets. A couple of substitutions come in for Pittsburgh because that's number 12, Aaron O'Connell in the game, as is number 3, Ava Hart. Remember last year, Hart playing well as a freshman, now a sophomore, but she made an impact last season, even as a young freshman. Pittsburgh tries to go inside on the design play, but 
Jalen Smith there to steal it away, and she's looking to go coast to coast. Has to pick up her dribble, now kick it up, kick it outside. And the Blue Comets will swing it around. Now into the hands of Bogle. She goes behind the back, tries to get rid of it, but it's stolen away by Gorley for Pittsburgh. She passes it ahead to Hart, and Hart lays it in for an easy two. Cuts the lead in half, 4-2, as we near the halfway point of the first quarter. Pittsburgh going to pull the pressure off and allow Chanute to set up in their half-court offense. Bogle driving on the inside, puts up a floater. That won't go. Nobody there for the rebound for Chanute. An easy Chanute board. A little go better ahead. job of crashing yeah, the boards. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody was there for the Blue Comets. Pittsburgh swinging around on the inside, this time to White. And White goes towards the basket. We'll get a blocking foul as Jalen Smith not quite in position yet. Kelsey Havlin going to check into the game, as will Kinley Chard for Chanute. Kearney Fulmer to check out, as will Preston Keating. Inbound goes to Hall. She'll kick it out to Hart. Hart fires up the three-point shot. It goes off the side of the backboard, and Havlin brings in the rebound. Blue Comet still leading 4-2, 3.20 to play in the first quarter. They try to go inside to Smith, but that's stolen away by Jackie Hall, and that's going to be two fouls on Smith, I believe. Yes, two quick fouls. So Smith going to check out for a little bit as Ashley Haviland will check in. So no true, no true big in the game right now for the Blue Comets. Pittsburgh directing their offense. I don't have the best look at what's going on. Quick two-point shot put up by White. That's missed. There was a lot of contact under the basket, but Chanute gets away with it that time. Shields with it. She'll dribble around, around the top of the key. Again, not sure who's playing down low right now for Chanute as there's five guards on the floor for the Blue Comets. Shields the inbound on the baseline. <clears throat> she gets it into Chard. Chard swings it around over to Bogle. And now she's going to go back to Shields. A lot of long passes here, which is a dangerous game against the lengthy guards of Pittsburgh. Peyton driving to the basket. Ooh, they said that's a shooting foul. Did he give her continuation? <laughs> sure did. So Peyton Shields was driving to the basket. As Jay said, they'll give her the continuation. Yeah, the basket was good, so they'll give her credit for the shot. That's what I was asking, if he gave her continuation through the basket. That, that was quite the continuation. <laughs> well, we'll take it. Take all the points you can get. Free throw good as well, so Peyton Shields. Can they pull she have five of the seven now for Chanute? Pittsburgh with it, Gorley up top. Ball swatted down by Shields. Gorley chases it down. Great defense here from the Blue Comet guards. Kinley Chard and Peyton Shields. Chard now defending up top as Hall drives inside, puts up the floater and it goes. Cuts the lead down to three and the inbound gonna be thrown away right into the hands of Herrett. And she'll pass it inside to O'Connell. And O'Connell going to be charged with a double dribble. And Pittsburgh's coaching staff really wanting to run a uh, very, a lot of pressure here with the defense. As head coach Chris Pop, I believe this is his first year here. And they did get a quick foul on Pittsburgh. It's going to be a number one, Jackie Hall. That's the sixth team foul on Pittsburgh. That's a 
See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not sure how the shot got up there, but it didn't go in. Now we're a ways away. I think the official got in there to try to break up a potential scrum from happening and uh, took two girls out with, on the way. <laughs> Tyra Bogle was looking around trying to figure out who kneed her in the forehead. I think she was trying to figure out how she missed that shot. The fact that she got the shot up was incredible, but once it got up, it was like, how'd that not go in? So my early takeaway from this one, Jay, they're allowing a lot of physicality up top. And Gorley hits the quick three-point shot, ties this game up at seven points apiece. It shows you how deadly a three-point shot can be. Chanute has completely outplayed Pittsburgh to this point. But here we are, tied at seven. No, no, the six, seven on the board. Oh, I that, have seven on my score sheet. Did they just give that as a two-point shot? They must have, because I thought I thought they called it a three. The free throw attempt from Ashley Havlin is missed. She'll get one more. First miss of the night for the Blue Comets from the line. Second attempt from Havlin. That one rattles around and out. Offensive rebound from Kelsey Havlin. But her follow-up shot is missed. Rebound goes to Pittsburgh as they'll look to come take the lead here in this one. And, ooh, nearly a travel by Herrett. And a three-point shot put up by Hall. It's an air ball as Chanute quickly pushing the other way. Three-point shot put up from Haviland. And Ashley Haviland drains the three-point shot, redeeming herself after missing two free throws on the previous possession. 10-6 on the scoreboard. We are just gonna say that was a two point shot earlier. Herrett with it, trying to break free of Shields. She hands off to Hall. Hall being guarded by Chard. Little swing around the other way. Gorley puts up a three point shot. It's swatted down from Bogle. And now a foul on the sideline with 4.8 seconds to left. And Tyra Bogle is going to go to the free throw line to shoot a one and one. And Coach Fox going to get Peyton Shields out of the game and just give her an extended breather here as the quarter ends. See if Tyra Bogle can't get some free points here. Bogle's free throw rattles out. Rebound going to be fought for. Pittsburgh comes up with it, but doesn't look like they'll do anything with it as the clock will expire. And after one, Chanute 10, Pittsburgh 6. We'll send it back to the studio for one minute. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School. Score after one quarter, Chanute 10, Pittsburgh 6. Best quarter we've seen in the first half anyway from this Chanute team so far this season. Very, very aggressive. And Blue Comets will start with possession of the basketball. As Peyton Shields nearly loses it. Now she will lose it. Ooh, and a quick whistle on the tie-up. 
Peyton Shields went for the crossover dribble and dribbled it off of her own ankle, and that'll be a turnover as being aggressive defensively was Alyssa Hotze. Hotze with it now. She swings it around over to Harrit. Now to Hall. Hall directing traffic, gets on the inside, puts up the shot, won't go, but she's fouled. And Jackie Hall going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. Foul's going to be charged to Jalen Smith, and that's going to be her third. So Smith likely going to have a seat until the end of the first half. First free throw from Hall is good. Somebody going to get some extended minutes tonight. As that free throw is missed, rebound goes to Pittsburgh. They get a quick three-point shot put up by Hall, but that's missed as well. And then Pittsburgh comes away with it. Quickly the other way, ball in the hands of Peyton Shield. She'll kick it out into the corner. Kearney Fulmer going to fire the three. That won't go. Offensive rebound from Kenley Chard. Her shot will go. Shields, possession to stay with Pittsburgh. Chard, kind of a defensive spe inbound. Going to be fought for as it's won by Rachel Miller, who just checked in for Pittsburgh. Peyton Shields nearly came away with the steal. Miller with it now. And <laughs> Tyra Bogle just swatted that one out of bounds. The guards are doing a really good job of being active on the defensive end. You say the guards. I mean, there's pretty much four guards on the floor at all times now. Well, that's why you say guards. <laughs> Inbound goes into the corner to Hotsey, and Hall hits the deck, but kept her dribble, and this ball is going to be stolen away by Peyton Shields. Numbers were not in her favor at all. Up and under move, and she's fouled as she tries to go to the basket. Smart move there by Peyton Shields. I thought I heard a train go by, but I think it's Jay just tooting his own horn. <laughs> First free throw was good from Peyton. Extends the lead back out to six, 13 to seven. And as Kelsey Havlin will check in, Tyra Bogle gonna get her first breather of the night. Second free throw from Peyton. Up and in as well, well Peyton Shields Getting all those free points from the line tonight. Pittsburgh quickly the other way. Long two-point shot put up. That's missed. As that was Rachel Miller. The rebound goes to Pittsburgh. Now a three-point shot put up by Hall. She follows her shot, gets her own rebound. Now another three-point shot put up. That one's missed as well. Jorge comes down with the rebound, gets it inside to Hall, and Hall lays it in for two. Somebody's got to get a rebound out there. As Hall nearly steals it away. Now Havlin passes it up to Peyton Shields. Shields goes cross court to Chard. And now the Blue Comets being aggressive. Kinley Chard gonna fire up a three point shot. That one won't go. And now Chard somehow gets the ball back. Excuse me, that's Havlin. And Kelsey Havlin gonna get tagged with a travel. Newt going to run kind of a box and one defense, it looks like. I think they're running a diamond and one. Well, it's a box if you turn it sideways. <laughs> Peyton Shields going to guard Jackie Hall. Three-point shot put up. That's going to miss everything. And ball's going to roll out of bounds, and they're going to say possession to Chanute. What's up, Coach? Coach Crabtree walking by, always looking sharp. I'll tell you what, Chanute's got the two best dress, dressed, at least best shoe game coaches in the SEK, and you will not convince me otherwise. Uh, I'm glad you like shoes. I do like shoes. Tyra Bogle thought about dribbling into a three-point shot. Havlin going to take the shot. I think that was altered as Holtzy was there. And Coach Fox 
Doesn't appear to like that which, shot which, too much. Which Haviland's sister was at the shot? That was Kelsey that took that shot. All right. So Pittsburgh coming the other way with it. Chanute still leading by five. It's 14 to nine as we go under five minutes to play here in the second quarter. Three point shot put up, misses everything by a lot. And Pittsburgh able to come down with a rebound. Hall gonna try to drive. She's cut off by Shields. Now another long floating two put up. That one misses pretty much everything but the back glass. But a little aggressive on the defense was Chanute. And that's gonna send Alyssa Hotze to the line. Ashley Havlin, the guilty party. At the line, number 22, Alyssa Hotze. Hotze gets the first free throw to go. She'll get one more as she cuts the lead down to four. Second free throw up and in as well. So Pittsburgh taking advantage of the free throw line as well, cutting this down to a one possession game. Cross court pass over to Bogle. And they get it back into the hands of Peyton Shields. Shields was trying to find Fulmer down low, but good defense there from Ana Jorge. We'll get a tie up within that scrum, and the possession arrow will favor Chanute. Almost looked like a football game broke out right there. Peyton Shields to inbound under the basket. She'll get into the corner to Haviland, that's usually where that travel call comes. Not, not tonight anyway, at least in the girls game. <laughs> Pittsburgh pushing the other direction into the hands of Hall, trying to drive baseline, good defense there by Shields to cut her off. Now they'll swing it around the other side. The long two put up by Rachel Miller, that won't go. And the rebound gonna be brought down by Peyton Shields. Slight pressure put on by Pittsburgh, nothing much. Just Shields has to give it off to Bogle. Now they'll swing it around into the corner. Fulmer fakes the three-point shot. Haviland fakes the three-point shot. Somebody just shoot the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Ashley Haviland, crow hop, gets it out to Bogle. Now into the corner. Lots of passing going on as it's five on four. Peyton Shields puts up the long two. Fulmer there to get the rebound and throws it out to Shields and it's stolen away by Hotze. Hotze gonna go coast to coast. And I don't know what Fulmer was thinking down there. She was right underneath the basket with the ball. And with her height, you got to just go up to the bucket. First free throw will be missed from Hotze. As Kinley Chard going to check in, as does Preston Keating. Fulmer and Kelsey Havlin will check out. Second free throw up, and that one rattles in. Cuts the lead down to two, it's 14 to 12. Inbound goes to Bogle, she picks up her dribble now over to Keating. Keating gonna give it right back to Bogle. As they try to pass it up to Shields, it's stolen away from Jorge. Jorge tries to lay it in, can't get the shot to go, but a follow up shot. Oh, they're gonna say she traveled first, as that was Gabby White coming in with a full head of steam. Feet were going a little too quick. Yes, they were. Chanute not handling this pressure great. It's now into the hands of Keating. She'll be trapped. She gets rid of it, gives it to Haviland. Good job that time until Hotze swats it out of bounds. And the energy on the bench from Pittsburgh, unmatched right now. Coach Fox over here on the sideline doing just that, coaching, as he's telling them whenever that defense runs around like that, that quickly, they're reacting. So that's when you need to pump fake some of those passes. Peyton Shields puts up a falling away two-point shot. Jump ball. Not sure how that's a jump ball. Nope. Nobody for Chanute was touching the ball. That should have been a traveling violation. Oh, that gets arrow back in our favor, though. It does, but odd call there. I'm sure Coach Fox is going to ask about it <laughs> as this official makes his way down the floor. Just a, a nice quick little, hey, what did you have on that? Right. 
Parrott with it being guarded by Chard. As they swing it around. Out of Herod in the corner. Three point shot won't go. As Pittsburgh comes in strong for the rebound, but Gabby White going to knock it out of bounds. And here comes the pressure again from Pittsburgh. They get it into Bogle. Bogle gets it over to Keating. Now Keating going to be trapped. She'll go back to Bogle. Bogle nearly traveled with it. Gets it over to Keating. Keating going to try to pass out of it into the hands of Chard. Ooh, we'll get a foul, and Chard just took a shot to the head. Foul was charged to number 10, Addie Drake, who had just recently checked in. Kimley Chard took a thigh to the forehead. Official asking if she's all right. Good for now. Oh. She got some blood on that leg. Uh, I see that. <laughs> and a substitution due to blood. It's tougher than I am. First free throw is missed from charge. She'll get one more. Charge second free throw. Shot is up, and that one goes. Extends the lead back out to three. It's 15-12. Blue Comets on top, 2-13 to play in the second quarter. Kearney Fulmer going to check in as Ashley Haviland checks out. The inbound goes to Harrett. And Peyton Shields going to pick up her second foul, just being a little too aggressive. That's still just the sixth team foul for Chanute. So the next one will be free throws, although Chanute's been shooting free throws this entire quarter and then some. And I don't mind Peyton being aggressive right there. I mean, that's her second foul, though. You're going to need her this entire game. Pittsburgh. Long passes here at this possession. Herrett down in the corner. He gets it into Ana Jorge. Her shot's missed. Rebound goes to O'Connell. She's missed. And Coach Fox frustrated under the basket as Tyra Bogle just took an elbow to the mouth. Coach Fox understandably frustrated as that's that's one of those ones in college basketball they get the replay out. Right. And it's a flagrant too. I mean, she took a an elbow to the mouth. In the game for Shadu, number 11, Kelsey Havlin. Kelsey Havlin going to check in as uh, I believe they're going to have to clean the court up. I'm not sure. I, I believe so. I think there's some blood down there. I say she took a shot, but they got her over in the locker room. We'll see how she is. As I would imagine she'll probably be there. The remainder of this half. Yeah, the remainder of, her ha of the half. On the bright side, if, if there's anybody that can help Tyra out, I just saw her dad uh, heading that way. He's a doctor. Oh, well, that's he's, good. He's, that's the right guy to help out. Well, I can't, I can't wait to see the uh, explanation they gave Coach Fox. I don't uh, think we'll ever hear that. Mm. If we do, it's probably not going to be in the headset. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Very true. But hopefully Tyra's all right. Hopefully she can make her way back out here. But, yeah, that was definitely a shot she took. So uh, hope for the best for Tyra. Teams back out on the floor as... O'Connell at the free throw line, misses the first free throw. She'll get one more. As again, Blue Comets leading 15 to 12, 156 to play, 146 to play, excuse me, in the first half. Second free throw is good, cuts the lead down to two for Chanute. 
Chard inbounds, gets it into Shields. She'll be doubled immediately as she tries to go down the near sideline and a little too aggressive as good job Peyton Shields just trying to dribble out of it, waiting for Pittsburgh to be a little too aggressive. And they in fact are, so that'll send Peyton Shields to the free throw line where she'll shoot two. Peyton was just waiting to see if they would be over aggressive and her gamble paid off. First free throw for Peyton is up and in. Extends the lead out to three, 16-13. So Peyton gonna get one more free throw here as Chanute was trying to figure out what defense they're gonna run. Peyton gets that free throw to go as well. Where's she at the line tonight? She is seven of seven. <laughs> for a team that has 17 total points, as Ana Jorge lays that one in for two and quickly gets the lead back down to two, 17-15, and ball stolen away by Hotsey, and this game is now tied. Keating with it, gives it up to Haviland. Haviland gonna go back to Shields, and now Shields gonna cross the timeline, has to pass out of it quickly as she was doubled right as she crossed that timeline. Now Peyton with it, going to slow down the offense a little bit. Score again tied at 17, a minute three to play. And they're going to say Peyton was fouled. I thought they were going to call it travel there. I thought they were going to call it travel there. <laughs> call me crazy, Peyton thought they were calling the travel too because she was about to go off on that official. <laughs> say, whoa, my left foot never came up. But. Shields hits that free throw. It's, that's eight of eight from the line. Yes. She'll get one more. Peyton the leading scorer in this game. As that free throw goes as well. Peyton Shields nine of nine from the free throw line in a two-point game. It seems pretty big. It is very, very big. Pittsburgh trying to force it to the basket. Jorge tries to pass inside. It's stolen away. Good job by Preston Keating. And now she'll dribble out of it here. She dribbles it all the way across midcourt. Peyton Shields now behind the back dribble, clock down to 40. They go oh, nice. inside. It was a great look to Haviland. She didn't get it cleanly, and it goes up to oh. Kinley Chard, and she can't get the layup to go. Jackie Hall drains it, cuts it to a one-point game. As we've got five seconds, now two seconds. Peyton Shields gonna try to chuck it one-handed and nowhere close. But at the half, Chanute leading 21 to 20. We'll send it back to the studio for five minutes. When we come back, we'll have your row motors and trailer sales halftime show. We're li you're listening to Chanute Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
back here at Pittsburgh High School. Blue Comets leading 21 to 20 here at the half, and it has been an interesting first half at that as it has been a very aggressive approach, something that we did not exactly see on Tuesday night down at Lebec County with the Blue Comet offense. They're getting to the free throw line and getting those free points, and that is exactly what has happened here tonight as Peyton Shields has attempted and made nine free throws. Uh, I mean, that alone is the reason I'll say that Chanute has the lead in this game. Again, it's just a one-point lead, 21-20, but without Chanute's sharp shooting from the free throw line, it's hard to imagine that Chanute would be leading in this game because uh, they were in the bonus there at the end of the first quarter, and they were able to take advantage of it and get some very easy points here in this one. And not only that, got to give credit, uh, as Jay has mentioned many times throughout the broadcast, the defense has been phenomenal from the Blue Comet, especially from the guards. And I'll point out two specifically, and I'm sure Coach Fox in postgame will point out even more. But Peyton Shields, Kinley Chard both have been great in this one as just quick hands and able to cut off defenders has made a huge impact on this in this game. And I'll credit that as much as the free throws as to reasons why Chanute is winning this game right now. Absolutely, free throws have been big. I mean, going to the basket has been big. Uh, Shields leads Chanute with 11. A nine of those from the free throw line, right? Uh, nine of those at the free throw yeah. line, correct. Peyton Shields. Just uh, Fulmer has four. Ashley Haviland has three. Uh, Chard has three. I think that, yeah, that covers everyone. Uh, for as, them. As a team, what is Chanute shooting? From uh, the free throw line? They are shooting 28% from the floor. What about from the free throw line? 71% from the line and 20% for three point range. What, what was the overall on the free throw line? What for what? Uh, 10 for 14. 10 for 14. So, yeah, you've left a few out there, but still. Right. 10 and for 14, and, and ju that's just the first half. The first half, correct. Uh, for them, Hall has eight, Gorley has two, Jorge has two. How do we, Holtz, is that how we decide to say that? Hotsey. Hotsey, sorry, Hotsey. She has five, O'Connell has one, Hurd has two, and they are shooting 29% uh, from the floor, 57% from the line, and 11% from three. So shooting from the floor, it's actually been fairly even, correct? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty one percentage point. Yeah, yeah say Pittsburgh, even. Pittsburgh a little bit better. Let's say so that one percent, but overall, I mean, that's not uh, something that would catch your eye a whole lot. So, um, two teams shooting pretty even from the from the floor. So we'll see what happens here in the second half as it looks like Tyra Bogle has made her way out of the locker room. And we'll see if she plays or not. <laughs> well, she's looks like she might have taken a shot. So I, it looks like she has a knot on her forehead too. And a trooper out here is Tyra Bogle. As you watching the live stream, you see her walk across your screen. But we are going to send it back to the studio for one minute, wrap up our Row Motors and Trailer Sales halftime show. When we come back, we'll have third quarter action. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
quickly back to action here as we start the third quarter. As Chanute had possession of the basketball first. They went inside to Fulmer. Her shot was blocked down. And then Chanute missing a three-point shot. Now back here on this end, Fulmer fouled going to the basket. And she'll go to the line to shoot two. As Gabby White, the guilty party, picking up the foul for Pittsburgh. First free throw for Fulmer up and in. I don't know if she thought that was going to go in. See her facial expression. She let go of it. Kind of had that weird look. And as it went in, I believe her words were, whoo. <laughs> Fulmer fighting for the rebound. Unable to bring it in, however, on the missed free throw. And now Pittsburgh going the other way. Purple Dragons try to go inside. And Desi Gorley guilty of a travel. And here it is again. Pittsburgh going to press likely the entire second half as that was honestly their best offense was trapping on the defensive end. Absolutely. Uh, I think Fulmer's going to be big here in the second half. We're going to put the ball inside to her. And Jalen Smith out there. The inbound went to her, but it was knocked out of bounds. Smith in there with the three fouls. Peyton Shields trying to inbound it. He gets it into Smith. Smith picks up her dribble now into the hands of Tyra Bogle, who started this half. Fulmer down low, and they're going to say she go on the baseline. They, they got a block. They did get a foul. I like it. On a Jorge, the freshman picking up her second foul. So far under the basket, I was wondering if they got her on the baseline, but good job by Kearney Fulmer. Inbound goes to Bogle. She'll put up a shot that's missed. It'll be fought for and knocked out of bounds off Pittsburgh. Possession to stay with the Blue Comets. So now a third opportunity for the Blue Comets here, this possession. To Fulmer. Now they'll go back outside. Nice look by Peyton there. Great job, Peyton Shields, doing the scoring in the first half and now starting off the second half with a nice assist. 6.40 to play in the the third quarter, Blue Comets leading by four. Jackie Hall fires up a three from the corner. That won't go. Jorge there for the rebound, and we're going to get a push on Pittsburgh. It's going to be number 20, Gabby White, picking up the foul. It'll be the second on White. Possession back to Chanute. These officials aren't afraid of that whistle here tonight. <laughs> They're like a good streaky three-point shooter. It's either all or nothing with the foul calls. <laughs> Bogle with that Band-Aid on her chin. She gets it up to Preston Keating. Now they'll swing it back around the other direction. Peyton Shields being patient. And Shields going to travel with I it. I thought they were getting her with a carry there. It was a carry, but she shuffled the feet while she carried it. <laughs> <laughs> I think carry probably was the correct call. Even Coach Fox was kind of rolling his eyes like, wait, what? <laughs> Interesting call there. Is it looked like Bogle got a hand on that ball. Thought he was going to call a tie up there. Uh, but I thought he was actually going to call a foul. Tire there. Said Jorge shuffled her feet while there was dual possession, I guess. That's his call. I'm not sure he knows what his call was there. Peyton Shields being triple teamed. Now goes inside to Fulmer. Fulmer chases it down. She's triple teamed. Tyra Bogle wide open for a three. Can't get that shot to go. Rebound going to stay here for now. And it appears there's at least one upset person in the crowd. Wouldn't like the call. Somebody, somebody up there over there was upset a little bit. Sounds like it. Nonetheless, it does result in a tie-up possession arrow favoring Pittsburgh. So Hall to bring it up the floor for the Purple Dragons. As White with it gives off to Hall. Hall going to pull up from long range and leaves it well short. And it looks like Hotsey there attempting to save that one. And she'll step on the in line. It'll be a turnover possession back to Chanute. I have a theory. 
We'll see if it's right. That could have been a travel on Shields. Is, they'll pass it up into the hands of Fulmer. Fulmer lays it in for two. Blue Comets leading by six. My theory is that Pittsburgh is exhausted on offense because they spend so much energy on defense. That's the reason they can't score this half. We saw it on the three-point shot now on the floater there being put up by Gorley. Just leaving shots well short. These girls are exhausted. Well, the, you, like you said, they are uh, extending a lot of energy on the defensive end. And Gabby White just picked up her third foul. I believe all three of those coming in this third quarter. Yes, sir, you are correct. Shields inbounds it, gets it up to Bogle. Now she'll go back to Peyton Shields. Peyton doubled, throws it over on the other side to Smith. Again, just so much aggressive defense, and they're going to get another carry. <laughs> Coach Fox not agreeing with that call at all. Well, they missed Fulmer down open inside there again. Uh. If you're watching the live stream, uh, Coach Fox was right in the view of that one. <laughs> he just kind of looked at the official like, huh, what? And just clapped his hands and said, all right, move on. Next possession. Blue Comets leading by six, 440 to play in the third quarter. Hall with it. She'll be guarded by Shields. They swing it around. Now they go back the other direction. Oh. Such a late, late whistle there. As Aaron O'Connell went to the ground, and they're going to say Peyton Shields assisting her to the ground. That'll be the third on Peyton. Peyton going to have Peyton going to bring the ball up the floor the other direction. Chase Smith with it now. She's driving to the get basket. Off of the carry too. And that, that, that one was a carry. I'll, I'll give her that one, but uh, <laughs> the same officials called this call three times now. Uh, he's he getting like that. Yeah, he's carry happy right now. I bet he's a big movie buff. You know what his favorite scary movie is? What's that? It's Carrie. It was a joke. Oh, it was got it. I yeah. got it. It's my fault. You missed. Slow. Yep. It's all right. Yeah. Jackie Hall driving to the basket, puts up the shot. She was fouled, and Kearney Fulmer going to pick up her first. Hall's first free throw rattles in, cuts the lead down to five. As Kelsey Haviland going to check in, Preston Keating going to have a seat. So Hall to the line one more time. Second free throw up, rattled around, and then eventually falls in. Ana Jorge going to check back in. As it looks like Lakin Lefevre, who had checked in, will now check back out. Four-point lead for the Blue Comets. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. More pressure. Ball nearly stolen away. And it does go off the hands of Peyton Shields out of bounds. Possession back to Pittsburgh. Kinley Chard going to check in. Kearney Fulmer to check out. Chard defending the inbound, which is Hall. They get it into Jorge. Good communication there. It's an offensive foul. Great job, Jalen Smith, standing her ground. And Jackie Hall just coming in with a full head of steam. Pittsburgh's coaches disagreeing with that call. Oh, I thought Jalen Smith had been there for a while. She was camped out. That, that was a, a really good call, but Chris Pop not liking that call at all. And Coach Fox is going to take a 30-second timeout to talk about it and let Coach Pop have a few seconds to discuss how he feels about that call. We'll take 30 seconds with him. Blue Comet's up four. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
3.47 to play in the third quarter. Chanute leading 26-22. Chanute will inbound under the basket as Jay Smith will handle it. Gets it in to Peyton Shields. And ball's going to be stolen away. Long two. And that shot will be made by Alyssa Hotze. Shields with it now. Chanute leading by two. 3.30 to play. And she gets it up to Bogles. They cross the timeline. Ball tipped away. Goes into the hands of Jay Smith. And a shot going to be put up. And an offensive foul will be charged. And give an assist there to Chris Pop as he earned that foul call, didn't he? Yes, he did. That's the 13th foul And Coach Fox going to let the official know. You got pressured into that call. Still discussion under the basket. Good for Coach Fox. Sticking up for his senior player. I think this official on this side is getting tired of hearing both coaches. <laughs> Might be. Tyra Bogle going to steal that one away as she goes to the ground. And a travel... As apparently Tyra Bogle just went to the ground on her own willingly. To apologize is Jalen Smith, just a junior, but we can all agree she plays like a senior out there. She's a leader on the floor. Good defense here by Peyton Shields up top. Gorley trying to dribble out of it. Now they go inside. That was a travel. And shot was blocked by Haviland. And I think they're going to get a foul here on Pittsburgh. As Lefevre a little too aggressive there. That'll be the second foul on Lefevre. Jackie Hall going to check out as Ava Herrett checks in. I don't think Kelsey was happy with that foul that she got right there. No, not so much. Bogle with it, and she picks up her dribble, and she's bumped. It'll be a quick foul on Pittsburgh, and that should put us into one and one That was the seventh team foul. Yeah, the officials still trying to figure it out, but yeah. That foul was charged to Megan Johnston, her first. Excuse me, Ava Herrett. And yeah, that will indeed put Tyra Bogle at the free throw line for a one and one opportunity. Front end of the one and one is missed. Rebound goes to Pittsburgh. That was a carry by Jorge. It was missed. She airballs the three-point shot. As Peyton Shields comes away with it. Two and a half to play. Blue Comets leading by two. Blue Comets searching for their first win on the season. Peyton Shields driving left hand, loses it nearly off of her leg. Now goes up for the shot. Can't get that one to go. Bogle follow-up shot won't go. And Pittsburgh eventually comes down with the rebound as you know, lots of contact under the bucket. Players flying everywhere as Fulmer all by herself. And now the defense is going to catch up. Fulmer puts up the shot. That won't go. And going to be tipped out of bounds off of Pittsburgh. Chanute will keep possession. Not a lot of shots made this lot quarter. Of, no, no, sir. A lot, of, a lot of defense, a lot of pressure. Not a lot of made, not a lot of good shots taken for what it's that's, worth. That's correct. Peyton Shields inbounding under the basket. Shot put up, and it's missed, but I believe that was Tyra Bogle under the basket. Yes, sir. And she'll go to the line to shoot two. Lefever picks up the foul. That'll be her third. So Tyra Bogle. Somewhere back there shooting free throws. First free throw is missed. As she 
reaches towards her bandaged chin. As you know that's got to be on her mind. You can, you can pop up, get it bandaged up, but it still hurts. <laughs> oh, absolutely. She took a shot. Second free throw for Bogle up, and she gets that one to go. So extends the lead out to three, 27-24, 1.59 to play in the third quarter. Hall with it. She'll be defended by Chard. Good defense there by Chard. This Hall has to get rid of it eventually. Herrett in the corner being guarded by Bogle. She'll drive, puts up a shot, misses everything as Haviland comes down with the rebound. Gets it into the hands of Bogle. Bogle going to pass it up the floor now to Peyton Shields. <laughs> Shields tucked the ball away momentarily to check the clock, see where things were at. Shields going to take the long two-point shot, went hard off the iron and missed. Rebound goes to Pittsburgh. 1.15 to play in the third. Three-point shot put up by Harrett, and that one will be missed. Rebound goes to Chard. Now to Bogle, Peyton Shields, ball nearly stolen away. Chanute has numbers for a minute, and now the ball hits the ground. And going to get a foul there on Kinley Chard. As she earned that foul. Good pop I, to the I face. I, I believe she hit the ball. Well, she hit the ball first, but she made contact with the face. I was a little surprised there wasn't a jump ball when there was players on the floor, but it looked like Ana Jorge did have clear possession of it. Tyra Bogle will check out as Preston Keating checking in. Hall and Chard coming up the floor. Chard a little too aggressive there. Just gives Jackie Hall a bear hug. <laughs> she just want to make sure she's doing all right. Yes, it's two fouls. You know, uh, coach, the great coach Emmett said, you got five, might as well use them. 50 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Hall going to go all by herself to the basket. And good job there by Ashley Haviland. Just, she didn't go for the rebound, but she made sure nobody else was going for the rebound either. And Ashley going to earn a breather after that effort. Bogle checking in, inbound goes to Tyra. She'll be doubled, picks up her dribble, now gives it off to Peyton. Inside to Fulmer. Fulmer, one extra pass, didn't need the pass. And who'd she give that off to? Kinley Chard? Yes, sir. Yeah, Chard didn't get the shot to go, but she's fouled. And Kinley Chard with two free throws and an opportunity to extend this out to a two possession lead. First free throw for Chard up and in. So a four-point lead for the Blue Comets, 28-24. Second free throw up and in as well. Uh, Shakira Wall is going to check in. Peyton Shields going to get a little bit of a breather here. Walls who... We haven't seen much of on the varsity action. She was going to check in for a moment Tuesday night, but then the situation didn't allow. We've got a timeout here by Pittsburgh. It'll be a full timeout. We'll take 60 seconds with them. Blue Comets leading by five here in the third quarter. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
Back here at Pittsburgh High School, 23.8 seconds to play in the third quarter. Schnute holding on to a five-point lead, 29-24. Inbound goes to Hall. She'll give it off. And now a three-point shot put up by Hotsey. That one misses everything. Hotsey going to try to chase down her own rebound, but unsuccessfully so. As with 11 and a half seconds to go, Peyton Shields will check back in. Ja'Kyra Walls checks back out. And good job from Walls doing her job on defense there as Pittsburgh not scoring any points that possession. Inbound, swatted back out of bounds. Desi Gorley checking back in for Pittsburgh. Bogle to inbound here. Is that one nearly stolen away? And, oh, man. Alyssa Holtzy, man, give her credit. She's flying all over the place. That young lady ain't afraid to hit the floor. If nothing else, she's been able to burn three seconds off the clock doing all this. <laughs> now Peyton Shields will inbound from a tough spot in the corner. And we're going to get a warning here as Aaron O'Connell crossed the imaginary line. And the inbound goes to Bogle, and now ball on the floor. We're going to get a tie-up. Possession arrow favors Chanute. That's probably worst-case scenario there because now Pittsburgh likely going to get the ball to start the fourth quarter. Yes, sir. I, I think they should just throw one deep here. And Inbound goes to Bogle, and, yeah, just – hold the ball at this point and she just <laughs> chucks it down to the other end is that one nowhere near the bucket but I'm after not three call that a shot yeah, yeah. after three chanute 29 pittsburgh 24 we'll send it back to the studio for one minute you're listening to blue Comet basketball right here on z95.3 Five-point lead for the Chanute Blue Comet ladies as they start the fourth quarter. Listening in there from Dustin Fox. O'Connell with it in the middle. They kick it out in the corner. Three-point ball into the hands of Keith. Correct me if I'm wrong. That'll be the tenth foul. Yes, that should put us in double bonus. So that'll be two shots for Jalen Smith. First free throw for Smith. The lead sticks at two. Jay going to get one more from the line here. As she spins the ball, dribbles twice, shot up hard off the back of the iron. And Jalen Smith misses them both. So 29-27 still. 7-10 to play in the fourth quarter. Gorley with it. Puts the ball on the ground, gives it over to Hotsey. Hotsey now out to O'Connell. Gorley going to take another three-point shot. That one well long, and rebound goes to Peyton Shields. Peyton Shields, uh, we don't keep rebounding stats, but it feels like she's got a lot. Preston Keating, man, she passed open a passed up a wide open three-point shot. As I get it. Your friend is the clock. Fulmer going to fire up a three, and that one very long. Would have preferred Keating take that shot early in the possession. As I was saying, clock's your friend, but I don't think you're going to run six and a half minutes off. No, you, it's not four corners anymore. Still, still run your offense. Shields to inbound, gets it in under the basket, and the shot goes. Great job by Kearney Fulmer to find the open space. Play physical, take the contact, and get the shot to go. Fulmer's played really big inside this game. 
free throw for Fulmer is missed. And still fighting for the rebound. Fulmer comes away with it. And great job, Coach Fox, utilizing the timeout to steal a possession. It'll be a full 60-second timeout. Blue Comets leading by four. Again, we'll take a one-minute timeout. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Six twenty-nine to play in the fourth quarter. After an and one attempt was missed by Kearney Fulmer, Chanute fighting for the loose ball and Coach Fox calling the timeout to steal a possession. And Jay Smith with it picks up her dribble, kicks it out to Shields. Shields going to dribble around, reset. Now Peyton Shields going to fire up the three-point shot, misses everything but the glass, and now Pittsburgh an opportunity on the other end. Quick two-point shot put up from Hall. That's missed. And Preston Keating there with the rebound. Coach Fox was not happy with that last possession from Chanute. Jalen Smith spin moves underneath. And the shot goes. Jalen Smith, great drive on the baseline. Good move there to stay under control and put that basket in. Desi Gorley picking up the foul. Throw up for Smith. It rattles out. Offensive rebound from Bogle. She can't get the shot to go. They kick it back out as Fulmer gets the rebound. Now inside, Bogle layup. Does go! Chanute with a burst of offense. They lead by eight. It's 35-27 with 5.40 to play in the fourth quarter. Ana Jorge at the table waiting to check in for Pittsburgh. Hall with it, goes into the corner as they'll kick it back out. And what's the call here? What? Uh, I believe he called a foul. Oh, Kearney Fulmer going to get charged with the foul as Hotsey at the line shooting two. The first shot goes. <laughs> Coach Fox just looked over this way, shrugged his shoulders. I don't know. <laughs> same, Coach, same. Second free throw for Hotsey. That one, long carom off the rim. It goes out of bounds. And they're saying off Chanute. Officials get together, and now they'll say off white. Possession to Chanute. Good job by the officials. That was about to be back-to-back -back calls where you just thought, what? <laughs> Peyton shields the inbound there in the corner. Gets it in to Smith. Smith goes back to Peyton. Peyton crosses the timeline without much pressure. Gets it inside to Fulmer under the basket. Kicks it out to Keating. Keating going to fire up the three-point shot. Air balls that shot. And rebound goes to Pittsburgh. It's 35-28. And a little aggressive there on the defense. It was Preston Keating. And quickly goes to his bench. Going to bring Kinley Chard in. And I believe the word there was no threes. Absolutely no threes. Well, is that us not taking threes or them not shooting threes? No, them, I think, well, yeah, well. So a one and one opportunity here for Gorley. She gets the front end to go. And yeah, costly mistake there is already leading to one point. Now lead down to six. I like the play of Kinley Chard on the floor with the six-point lead. 
As she has been great defensively here in this one. Second free throw, that one rattles out. Rebound fought for, that easily could have been a push. And Anna Holson was just a little bit. Well, she's just a freshman. Now right back to Bogle. Bogle. Great job, not one dribble, it was from Fulmer. That's two in a row. Got to get this one to go to at least break that personal streak of a couple missed free throws. Fulmer second free throw, that one rattles around and out. And Tyra Bogle picking up a foul 92 feet away from the basket for Pittsburgh. And it's gonna send Jackie Hall, the best player for Pittsburgh, to the line to shoot a one and one with the clock stopped. That's a really bad foul for the Blue Comets. Yes, it was. I believe Coach Fox giving that same message to his team. Front end of the one and one from Hall is missed. Jorge there on the offensive rebound. Pittsburgh another chance. Hall in the corner, passes up the three. Good closeout defense from Bogle. Now she'll step back, take a falling away three. And Chanute not securing the rebound. And now Pittsburgh throwing it away. Neither team wants the ball. No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> the game of hot potato right now. And Chanute in a very weird place to inbound the basketball now. She's bleeding, yeah, Jack, Jacqueline Smith. And Jalen Smith bleeding there from the lip. The she'll we'll check out for a moment. Ash, Young man, athletic trainer here. Very busy tonight here through the girls game. Earn his money. Inbound goes to Shields. She fakes the pass deep. Now tries to get it to Ashley Haviland. Now into the hands of Chard. Aggressive defense Holy there, cow. man. That, ooh, don't like the no call there, but nonetheless, Pittsburgh with it. Could have been a travel there on O'Connell. Now Gorley with it, gets it back to Hall. 4.20 to play, three-point shot put up in the corner, and that one is drained. And that's Alyssa Hotze, cuts it to a three-point game. Peyton Shields with it, I'm gonna say a travel. Holy cow. Remember when they called all these fouls earlier in the game? Yes, sir. Peyton Shields just adjusting to the way they've called the game, and man, very physical these last couple minutes. Three-point shot fired up from Hall, it's missed. Offensive rebound from O'Connell, and they're gonna call a foul on Tyra Bogle. <laughs> I thought he was saying 42 for a minute. <laughs> I was like, she's not even out there, but you know, get Tyra Bogle. I thought they were going to call that on Peyton there, and I was like, she was standing straight up. O'Connell's first free throw rattles in. Pittsburgh playing with a lot of emotion right now. Second free throw from O'Connell rattles in. It's a one-point game. Ashley Havlin checks out as Jalen Smith checks back in. So this is a bit of game of runs. Four starters on the floor other than Keating in her place will be charred. Peyton Shields picks up her dribble as she was trapped. Two back up three, 37-34, 3.45 to play. Three-point shot in the corner put up. That's missed. Offensive rebound by Gorley. They get into the hands of Hall. Hall going to be fouled by Kearney Fulmer. Third foul on Fulmer. So Fulmer with three. Smith with four. First free throw rattled in. And Pittsburgh is getting some in. Kinley Chard going to check out. Keating more of an offensive threat. Bogle to inbound, bounce pass into Shields. Shields gonna try to dribble out of it. And she'll now pick up her dribble and she's fouled. The first foul is number 20 
And Peyton Shields, who had a very good first half from the free throw line, back there now with 3.33 to play in the fourth. Chanute holding on. Chanute holding on to a one point lead. First free throw up and in. Is that her first free throw this half? Yes, it's her first free throw. So 10 of 10, what's the percentage on that? Maybe 100-ish. 100 100-ish. 100 100-ish. Peyton Shields, second free throw. Climbs over the front of the iron, puts Chanute back up three. It's 39-36. Three and a half to play. Go ahead. If you had a jinxed her there, I'd have told her. That's fine. Ball was swatted out of bounds there by Chanute. Gorley to inbound, gets it into Hall. Thought about the three. Good shot, Peyton Shields. Nearly too aggressive, but able to step back. Hotze puts up a wild shot. Gorley there on the offensive rebound. She can't get the, re the shot to go. Now ball on the floor, still bouncing around. And we're going to get a tie-up. I believe that's going to favor Pittsburgh. Ana Jorge, slow to get up. Yeah, it looks like she's all right. She's holding the back of her head. In the game for Pittsburgh, number 14, Tasha Coleman. She reported, doesn't she have to check in? That should be a technical. Inbound goes to Hall. And ball nearly thrown out of bounds. Gorley able to bring it in. Any receiver in football thought that was an amazing catch by Gorley. <laughs> Hall with it. We go under the three-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Hall's going to give it off to Gorley. O'Connell going to set a screen. Gorley long two off the glass. And the bank is open in Pittsburgh. Pass ahead up to Keating. Keating going to slow things down. And a timeout by Chanute. 2.38 to play in the fourth quarter. Blue Comets leading 39-38. We'll take a full one-minute timeout. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Not as if there's a Pittsburgh anywhere other state that we'd be traveling to for high school basketball. But nonetheless, Pittsburgh, Kansas, 39-38. Chanute with the basketball, 2.35 to play. Peyton Shields thought about just stepping into that three-point shot. Smartly not. Now Keating with it in the corner. She'll dribble baseline. Has to back out of it as she's doubled there. On the baseline, now Bogle with it. Kicks it out, three-point shot put up by Shields. That one's missed. Offensive rebound for Chanute, and shot put up and missed. Have no idea who shot that. Uh, we'll find out here in a second. They get to the Tyra Bogle line. gonna go to the line. So Tyra Bogle, two shots from the line. First one a little long, that one's missed. Lead sticks at one. Yeah. 
Second free throw up and in. Lead at two, 40 to 38, 216 to play. Hall with it, guarded by Shield. She'll give it off to White. Now back to Hall. Hall going to put up a three-point shot. She's fouled. Oh, man, tough, tough foul there. I believe that was Preston Keating picking up the foul, and that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, that was very, very tough right there. I mean... Hall's first free throw up and in. She'll get two more as that was a three-point attempt. Chanute leading by one. 2.01 to play here in regulation. Hall's second free throw and misses that one short. But best, Pittsburgh can tie with this free throw. Third and final free throw attempt. Hall now with the ball. And dribbles twice. Right-handed shot put up. And that one's missed hard off the iron. Rebound goes to Fulmer. She gives it off to Peyton Shields. Shields directing traffic. Gets across the timeline. Chanute holding on to this one-point lead. And Hall picks up the foul. Ticky-tack. Benefits Chanute. Sends Chanute's best free throw shooter to the line. But... Man, that's a tough call on Jackie Hall. First free throw up and in for Peyton. She'll get one more. Ana Jorge checking back in for Pittsburgh as Gabby White checks out. Two-point lead for the Blue Comets. Big free throw right here. Peyton Shields free throw up and in. Man, dynamite from the line, Peyton Shields. It's a three-point game, 150 to play. Chanute has led pretty much since the beginning of this, but the largest lead they've had was eight. Hall's three-point shot put up. That's missed. Long shot leads to a long carom. Hall gets her own rebound. Gives it over to O'Connell. Now to the other corner, three-point shot put up by Hotze, now another offensive rebound and a three-point shot put up. Chanute has got to box out and get a rebound here as Gorley can't get it to go. And finally, Tyra Bogle runs one down. And a travel, holy cow. Tyra Bogle players falling down on top of her. Holy oh, man. wow, Coach Fox can't believe it. <laughs> he just gave me a look and didn't know what to say. Gonna take his anger out on me, I suppose. Wow. Yeah, you might get an earful. Oh, man. Uh, I, I think he'll compose himself no matter what happens. But, wow, what a tough one. We've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take 30 seconds. Blue Comets leading by three. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School, 42-39. Blue Comets leading by three with 118 to play. And after a questionable travel call, Pittsburgh will have possession of the ball. Pittsburgh taking the entire minute of that timeout. Maybe a little more. Hall will inbound from the baseline, gets it in. And they'll swing it around. Hall trying to come off of a screen. Now Gorley just going to fire up what I appear was a shot. Not a bad shot for Pittsburgh in that situation. And like Jalen Smith able to come down with the rebound. She was fouled, and now she'll go to the line on this end, and she will shoot two. 
That'll be the fifth foul here tonight on Aaron O'Connell. O'Connell gonna check out. Gabby White will check in. One of, the, one of these free throws here would be big. Smith, first free throw, rattles around and falls. Makes it a two possession game and Coach Fox clears the lane just to avoid picking up a foul, putting that confidence in the shooter saying, hey, we'll hit the shot. Second free throw for Smith, nothing but the bottom of the nylon. <laughs> she turns around and hushes the Pittsburgh crowd. And Pittsburgh is gonna get it across the timeline. They'll take a 30 second timeout. We're actually gonna leave it here for this one, Jay. Give us a little bit of time to talk. It's five point lead for Chanute. Uh, not a position Chanute's been in this year so far. Looking for their first win on the season. What do they gotta do to avoid Pittsburgh bringing this one back and tying things up or taking the lead? Free throws. Free throws. <laughs> gotta, gotta possess the basketball first. Be smart well, with the basketball. Yeah, they need to do a better job on the defensive glass down here <laughs> when Pittsburgh puts up a shot. Because Pittsburgh getting two and three looks at the basket is, is not yeah. good for us. No threes. Yeah, uh, and as Coach Fox just said, don't foul a shooter. I think uh, the best thing if we get a rebound is to get it get it in Peyton's hands as fast as we can. And uh, with her being our best free throw shooter, because you know they're going to foul down the stretch to extend the game out. Yeah, 65 seconds to play here in this one. Hotsey inbounds it. They get it in. Now into the hands of White. White looking to go anywhere else. Gorley going to fire up a three. That one off the glass. Bank not open this time. And Kearney Fulmer comes away with the rebound. She's fouled. And it appears Kearney Fulmer going to go to the line with an opportunity to shoot two. Fulmer hits the free throw. And regardless of what happens in this one, man, Coach Fox got to be pleased with his free throw shooting tonight. Second free throw from Fulmer. She gets that one to go as well, and you can just feel it. This team knows that they're 52.8 seconds away from their first win of the season. Can't lift your foot off the throttle, though. And... Peyton Shields runs through a screen. <laughs> Peyton Shields said, that's what I'm supposed to do, right? She just ran right through that screen. Give credit to Pittsburgh as it was number 32, Lakin Lefevre. She took that charge hard, or that screen. She misses both free throws, however, as it goes into the hands of Peyton Shields now. Clock now under 40 seconds. And Hall, a little too aggressive, going for this. Blue Comets leading by seven. If she hits both of them, it would give Chanute their largest lead of the night. First free throw, leaves it short. You can't say I jinxed her because I've been saying stuff like that all night. Well, I'm blaming it on you, fella. How are you going to blame that on me? Because. I've been saying the same stuff all night. Second free, okay. She missed them both. That one's, that's, that's fair now. But still a seven-point lead. 33 seconds to play. Hall picks up her dribble, now gives it off to Hotsey. Gets it over to Gorley. And it's stolen away. Good hands there by Bogle as they get it up into the hands of Peyton Shields. And they are going to get an intentional foul. As that was just a two-hand shove into the back of Peyton Shields. It didn't come initially. That's going to be on Alyssa Hotsey. 
So Chanute, two free throws, and they'll get the ball back. <laughs> Peyton Shields missing three straight free throws now after making how many straight? 14? 12. 12? I believe. 12 or 13. A lot. Second free throw. Peyton gets that one to go, and Chanute will have possession of the basketball with an eight-point lead. 18.9 seconds to play. Now the clock is your best friend. If you're Pittsburgh here, do you say don't foul? Not yet. Oh, nice crossover move there by Peyton Shields. And Pittsburgh letting 8.7 seconds run off the clock. Gorley went for the steal, and Peyton Shields with some dribbling magic out there, the crossover to the point where Gorley just completely whiffed. Two more here at the line for Shields. That one rattles in, now a nine point lead for the Blue Comets, their largest lead of the night. I knew it was coming, Jay, just take a second. Peyton sinks them both, a 10 point double digit lead for the Blue Comets. 10 seconds left. Hall going to fire up the three and air balls it with 3.9 seconds left. And Chanute. Chanute going to win this game. Their first win of the season and first SEK League win. And a big smile on the face of head coach Dustin Fox. Blue Comets win this one tonight, 49-39. We'll send it back to the studio for five minutes. When we come back, we'll have your Sealy Plumbing postgame show and an opportunity to talk with head coach Dustin Fox. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
back here at Pittsburgh High School where the girls tonight are victorious. What? What do you, what do you want? Well, the final score. I did it again. Oh, you're going to make me add it up. <laughs> you're killing me, Small. <laughs> 49-39. 49-30. Yeah, 10 point win. I'm gonna write this down right here. <laughs> I was I was looking up all this stuff for the guys pregame to get ready, and completely forgot what the score was, and they cleared the board. Wow. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do, man? I'm just I'm just one guy. I can't remember the score. <laughs> anyway, yeah, girls, one and zero tonight. We get a big win here on the road, a bounce back win after a tough game at Labette County and. Uh, anxious to talk to Coach Fox here in a few moments. As I know he's going to be very proud of his team as uh, the, the difference in tonight's game. Somehow Jay was hit the nail on the head. Free throws. Get to the line and shoot free throws, and that is exactly what they did, and that is exactly how they won this game. Uh, the, the two other things that you can point to to the reasons they won this game. Two, they were aggressive getting to the basket, which is kind of the same thing as the free throws. Two, the defense. Uh, the whole game, Peyton Shields was lights out defensively. Uh, Kinley Chard, the whole game, but especially there in that first half, Kinley Chard, man, played amazing on the defensive end and really kept this game in check and uh, kept Chanute in the lead of this thing. And Overall, the team just putting together a good, complete game and coming away with their first overall victory and, of course, their first league victory here tonight. It's your turn to talk. Oh, it's my turn. I was waiting on Coach. I'm no. so, okay, so there was a combined 60 free throw shot. So was that explains why it's 8 o'clock. Yeah, 29, Chanute was 29, 25 of 39 from the – from the free throw line for 64 percent you better hurry up so i mean oh hey we're gonna uh, do stats here in a minute because we're okay. not we're not gonna delay coach he's on his way he's ready to talk i know coach. he's ready and coach and i talked about it in pregame i asked him straight up what's your keys to winning and he said be aggressive get to the basket shoot free throws make free throws Man, jay laid it out perfect because that was the recipe to winning here tonight yeah, we, I mean, they, they really executed the game plan, and uh, we were tough. I mean, that, that game was physical, and and uh, we, we were tough, and we, we didn't always play pretty, but uh, we, we made the plays we needed to make. And, like, the other thing is this team hasn't been in a situation where we were up towards the end of the game. Like, that, that just wasn't happening for us last year. And so learning how to close out a close game, that was totally new for us in that situation. And I thought, you know, we, we took a couple rush shots there. We, we fouled a couple times that we should, and we let them kind of get back in it. And then, man, we just pulled it together, we, we, and we, we finished it out. And uh, I was just really proud of them. Yeah, that was one thing I had mentioned to Jay was unfamiliar territory when uh, he went on a little run there, went up seven at one point. And I thought, all right, how does this team handle it? They're not used to this. And I mean, not a shot on your team. I mean, it just it's been a struggle here early on. And – Pittsburgh was able to make a little run themselves, get back, but then there at the end, uh, Peyton Shields kind of just took over as she did in the first half. And from the free throw lines, I know I talked to her dad a little bit, <laughs> said she's going to be mad at herself over those three she missed. I know. Uh, I, Jay wants to blame me because I, I jumped the gun a little bit, I'll admit it. I said, well, when she makes these two free throws, they'll have their largest lead of the night. Goes ahead and misses both of them, and he just stared at me for the next whole possession. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be sure to let Peyton know <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, I'll take, I'll take it this time. I tried to deny it, but when she missed the second one, I thought, all right, that, that's on me. Um, but speaking of Peyton, uh, leading scorer here tonight for you guys, I believe she made one shot from the field, <laughs> all from the free throw line, but uh, her aggressiveness – you got to give her your quote unquote player of the game, but an honorable mention off the bench. Wanted to make sure that we we didn't let her beat us, and uh, you know Peyton Peyton did a nice job on her at times, but having Kinley that was so huge, and uh, you know Ken, Kinley's as athletic. Never let them really take over with eight rebounds, and uh, her man she she found people, hit some big free throws. I mean you just go down the line, the Havlin twins. Uh, Preston Keating, Ty Tyra, she's out there bleeding all over the court. And kind of, I asked her at halftime, I was like, can you go? And she's like, she's like, I'm good. And I was like, you can't go out there and be timid. You don't she's look like, good. And I, I know. I was like, told her, she, yeah. And, she, and she's like, she's like, coach, I'm not sitting. So, you know, she, she was out there toughing it out too. So pretty awesome to see our kids step up 
and uh, and play big. Out of the locker room, and I told Jay, I said, look at that whole fourth quarter, didn't pick up the foul, and grown leaps and bounds, her, her communication and just her effort, and uh, it's a lot of fun watching her play right now. All right, Coach, so big win, first win of the season, but you got two more SEK League games coming up. Coffeeville Independence, Independence Coffeeville. Uh, Coffeeville Independence. Okay, Coffeeville Independence. Both Montgomery County schools, those two teams went at it. Tuesday night, tough game. I believe Independence won a close one in that one, but what do you know about the Golden Tornado coming in uh, Tuesday night? They're a lot better. They're a lot better. We played it. We played in their summer league this uh, this year, and uh, saw them quite a bit. The summer they have they have athletes, they have shooters. Uh, best Coffeeville team that's been there in, in a number of years, and Coach Walker has done a great job getting that program turned around. And so, um, best team since the Twins were there. Uh, best team since the Twins were there for sure. Yeah, right. and so. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have our hands full. Uh, they, they beat Pittsburgh as well. And so, you know, but, but it's a game that we, at home, and, and we feel like we're, we're getting better and better every time we step on the floor. And uh, we, you know, hope we can come make so, this a, a winning streak. So what you're saying is we need as many fans and students at the game supporting these girls. Absolutely. We need, we need all of you guys there. Don't just watch on the live stream. I know they do a great job on the live stream on the radio, but we need you guys in the stands getting loud. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, Mr. Shields here isn't, isn't jinxing us from the free throw line anymore. No, no, not at all. Again, Coach, congrats on your first win of the season tonight. And hopefully, like you said, let's turn it into a streak on Tuesday night. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your support. No problem, Coach. Again, that's head coach Dustin Fox excited after the first win of the season here tonight. We're going to send it back to the studio for two minutes. When we come back, we will transition into our guys' pregame show. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School, we're going to have a very abbreviated guys pregame show here in our Commercial Bank pregame show. And a um, big part of that is because I wasn't cutting off Coach Fox, and I wanted to talk about that big win for them tonight. So uh, it's going to be about a 30-second pregame show. Jared in the SEK and number 30, Mason English, the 6'2 junior. Also some bigs down low in Jackson Turnbull. So uh, it'll, it'll be a tough one here tonight against Pittsburgh as again, we'll get the starters here in a little bit. We will have the national anthem here in a little bit as well, but uh, a tough matchup here as Chanute looking to bounce back after a tough loss Tuesday night at Labette County, a game that just, we mentioned it in our post-game talk with Coach. Chanute didn't necessarily do much wrong. Labette could just do everything right the whole night, it seemed like. I seemed believe you like. mentioned it. Labette didn't miss a shot in the fourth quarter. Correct. It's hard to hard to beat that. Uh, you're right. Very hard to beat. So, as in, but now it's the guys' turn and their opportunity to see if they can get a win here tonight. We are going to send it back to the studio for three minutes in honor of our national anthem. When we come back, we'll have your starting lineups. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z 95.3.
Back here at Pittsburgh High School, starting lineups making their way out onto the floor for both teams. We'll start with your Chanute Blue Comets. It's going to be number three, Larson Kester. Number five, Caden Seamster. Number 23, Rhett Smith. Number 31, Parker Henson. And number 35, Elliot Stevenson. For Pittsburgh, it's going to be number one, Dan Hastings. Number 10, Giovanni Salas. Number 11, Jackson Turnbull. Number 23, Joey Cronister. And number 30, Mason English. Head coach for the Pittsburgh boys, Jordan Woods. Head coach for your Chanute boys. He always well dressed. Devin Crabtree. You think he knows I say that about him? <laughs> I talk these guys up so much. So it will be Turnbull jumping center for Pittsburgh as Parker Henson will jump center for Chanute. And Turnbull's going to win that one. Gets it into the hands of his point guard in number 30, Mason English. English being guarded by Custer. English kicks it out into the corner. Hastings with it. It's not a name you see on a young man these days. Dan. Three-point shot fired up by English. That's missed. Rebound goes to Chanute. Lars Kester going to bring the ball down the floor, being defended by Cronister. Gets it inside to Henson. Now to Seamster. Seamster around the defender. And they will get a blocking foul. That's a good job by Seamster not going directly into English. And they'll say the foul was on the floor. Pittsburgh coach Jordan Woods pleading that that should have been an offensive foul. I don't know how that would have been an offensive foul. Henson thought about the three in the corner. Now seems they're going to kick it back out to Henson. Henson going to fire up the shot. That one won't go. Rebound goes to Pittsburgh. We're a minute into this one, still scoreless. We were scoreless for two minutes in the girls' game, and Blue Comet still got to 49. English drives. His shot won't go. Seamster comes away with the rebound. They get it up to Stevenson. Stevenson layup. Good job using his body to deflect the defender. And now English trying to go quickly the other way and pleading for a foul. He does that a lot. Rhett Smith the other way, and Rhett Smith lays it in for two. Mason English, something we saw last season. Arguably the best player in the SEK, but anytime he loses the basketball at all, he, he likes to ask for a foul. Turnbull, shot goes up, that won't go. Fights for the offensive rebound. He's able to save it, but they'll say foot on the line, out of bounds. Possession back to Chanute. You know, I think if Chanute would have done a little more of this Tuesday night, they'd have been in better shape, forcing the ball inside like they have. Well, going fast as well is a big part of it. English with it, driving into the basket, switches hands and lays it in with the left. Cuts the lead in half, 4-2. Blue Comet still leading. Seems to bring the ball up the floor. He'll be picked up by Salas. Get it up to Henson. Henson thought about the three, but not his shot. Seamster driving. He's bumped, and Seamster's shot won't go, but he'll get an opportunity to shoot two at the free throw line. Giovanni Salas, the guilty party on the foul. His first, team second. First free throw is missed, I believe. Yes, sir. Second free throw. That one rattles out as well. Turnbull comes away with the rebound. English pushing the other way now. Yeah, 
as they're going to get a call on the floor. I think they're going to get Larson Kester being a little bit too aggressive. Larson Kester, that will be his first personal foul. The first team foul on Chanute. Be the first team foul for Chanute. English to inbound, gets it into Turnbull, and good job by Henson to knock that one out of bounds. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh inbounding from the corner. They get it into Turnbull. Now to Conister. English at the rim. Can't get the ball to climb over the top of that iron. And rebound goes to Chanute. Blue Comet still leading 4-2, five and a half to play. Good job getting it inside to Stevenson. And nice English on that ball from Elliott Stevenson to get it to roll in. Stevenson's got four. 6-2, Blue Comets lead. 5-18 to play in the quarter. Seems they're almost too aggressive. Now they double English. They get it into Conister. He'll kick it out. Good closeout defense as Hastings likely had an open three. Ball goes inside, now on the floor. And Chanute able to wrestle it away. Seamster with it into the corner to Stevenson. And Stevenson got the feet going a little too quickly. That'll be a turnover. Under five to play in the first quarter. English to bring the ball up the floor. He'll give it off to Cronister. I'll get that kid's name right eventually. <laughs> I want to say Hollister for some reason. Turnbull shot won't go. Turnbull struggling here early on. Got to take advantage of these instances because he's going to hit those shots eventually. As he gets a big rebound after the missed three from Henson. Bounce pass inside to Cronister, and he loses it out of bounds. That's another turnover by Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh just playing abysmal here in the first quarter. Ryan Carew going to check in for Pittsburgh. Cronister going to check out. I'm glad I looked how to spell that and just didn't write it down. Yeah, right? Rhett Smith with it on the right wing. Gets it into Seamster. Seamster, crazy move, and somehow gets it to go with the left hand. That's what Chanute's got to do all night right there. Chanute playing extremely well as they steal it away from English. English getting frustrated out there. And it seems they're going to hand it off to Custer. I feel like Chanute needs a big three here just to blow the lid off this thing. Henson will take it, and it rattles in and out. Felt like that one was going, but it didn't. English going coast to coast and throws up some junk, but He'll get the trip to the free throw line. See the fouls on. It'll be on Parker Henson, his first, team second. That'll be his first personal foul, the second team foul on Chanute. Oh, English at the line. That one rattles out. Seems they're going to check out as Jordan Duncan checks in for the first time here tonight. English one more from the line, and that one will go. Cuts the lead down to five. 8-3, Chanute on top, 3.39 to play in the first quarter. Kester going to bring it up the floor, gets it up to Rhett Smith. Smith will swing it around, now back to Kester. Henson going to fire another three, and maybe stop shooting that. He's 0 for 4. Well, not for Shooter shoot, trying. but... <laughs> They shoot or shoot, but whew. The foul is called number three. Foul's going to be charged to Larson Kester. That's his second. Parker Manley's going to check in. Larson Kester, the leader of this team, going to have a seat. Parker Manley, who started the first three, first two games of the year. Going to check in with some big shoes to fill now as he is. And Manley a little late on the 
Good job by Jordan Duncan. Fights in English, and that one goes to Manley. Manley to Duncan. Duncan going to fire the three. A little long on the three-point shot from Duncan. And Rhett Smith nearly getting that one away from English. English airballing the three. And Manley there for the rebound. Rhett Smith quickly the other way. Great find from Elliott Stevenson to Rhett Smith. And Chanute going very quickly on the offensive end all night long. Three-point shot put up. And that one is drained. And that's number one, Dan Hastings, hitting his first three of the night. Manley brings it up the floor, gets it to Rhett Smith. When the Chanute goes fast, they can score easily. When, when they slow it, dives to the basket. Lots of contact. And Elliott Stevenson going to go to the line to shoot two. Foul's going to be charged to number 10, Giovanni Salas. That's his second. And if Pittsburgh coaching staff, they were asking for a travel. There's an argument to be made. <laughs> As Henson will check out. And we're gonna get a clear out underneath. Foul charge to Chanute. And that's on Stevenson, his first. And he will check out with that dead ball. Is Peter gonna check in? Nice move there by Turnbull in the two-man game as English gives it off to Turnbull and Turnbull lays it in for two. Duncan with it, kicks it out to Smith. Smith gonna fire up the three-point shot and not a great shot from Rhett Smith as Chanute was crashing the boards but unable to come away with one. English going coast to coast and an offensive foul on Mason English. Great job, Brax Peters standing his ground. And English going to have a seat with those two fouls as number 25, TJ Wesley, going to check in. A little bit of pressure being put on now by Pittsburgh. Brax Peter with it. They'll get it up to Seamster. Bounce pass into Duncan. Duncan hesitates, lays it in for two. Jordan Duncan, great hesitation on the inside amongst the trees. 14-11, Blue Comets lead by three. Pittsburgh looking to hold for the last shot. Clock down to three. Carew looking to drive all the way to the bucket. And they're gonna call a blocking foul under the basket. Tough call there on Caden Seamster. And first free throw missed. That was the first foul on Seamster. Now second free throw for Carew. And he misses them both. Ball don't lie. Ball does not lie as misses both free throws. So after one, Chanute 14, Pittsburgh 11. We'll send it back to the studio. We'll send it back to the studio. <laughs> for one minute as we got issues over here on the floor. Nonetheless, we'll send it back to the studio for one minute. Start of, start of the second quarter here. 
Blue Clements leading by three. Still not sure what was going on there. Still not sure if they've got it settled at this point. Police officers at this point. <laughs> Chanute with possession of the back. We go inside to Manley. He gives it over to Smith. Smith going to fire the three-point shot. Rattles in and out. Brax Peter there to bring it down. He'll kick quickly to his feet. He'll walk it off. Parker Manley being tough out there as that foul was picked up by number four, Ryan Carew, his first. Both teams now with five fouls apiece. Both administration for Pittsburgh and Chanute studying the crowd. Jordan Duncan going to fire up a deep three. That one won't go. Retz gets the shot to go, and we've got police officers everywhere around here. It's a high school basketball game, guys. Chanute leading by five. Hastings with it. He'll give it up top to Nate Mitchell, who just checked in. Manley with it. Thought about the three-point shot. Takes a jab step. Uh, picks up his dribble. Going to have to get rid of it. Gives it back to Brax Peter. Peter back to Manley. Manley calling a play out. A little swing it around the other way. Coach Crabtree, he didn't like it. He thought it was there. He'll give it inside to Rhett. Rhett kicks it out to Seamster. Thought about the three. Now driving baseline. Oh, puts up the floater. <laughs> what a pretty with move. The hand, right hand. Great shot there by Caden Seamster. He's having a heck of a night. If you remember Caden Seamster's freshman year, it was on this court where he really made a name for himself on the basketball floor. I believe it was the third quarter where he hit three threes and ignited a Chanute run. It's like Duncan going to be charged with the foul here. That'll be his first. As looks like he got Turnbull on the wrist as he was going up for the shot. First free throw goes for Turnbull. Second free throw missed. Rebound by Peter. Chanute going to bring it down the floor. Seamster with it. Backdoor cut to Duncan. Jordan Duncan lays it in. Great find from Caden Seamster. Blue Comets lead 20 to 14. Carew on the inside. And nice shot there by Ryan Carew as he lays it in for two. Blue Comets going the other way with it. Rhett Smith now catches it and spins. He's looking for somewhere to go. Gets it off to Duncan. Duncan driving on the inside. Tries to find Peter and not there. Rhett Smith now battling as Carew looking to go coast to coast. Goes behind the back. That was a sweet pass. Hastings wasn't ready for it. And an offensive foul. Great job. Parker Manley taking that one. I'm just your sidekick here uh, writing down numbers. The first foul that was on Turnbull. Chanute leading 20 to 16, 5 10 to play here in the second quarter. Manley with it, gives it over to Seamster. Seamster driving baseline, avoiding defenders. A little hard off the back iron. Great move there by Seamster, just couldn't finish the shot. Carew going coast to coast, tries to give it off to Chronister, and it's tipped in by Turnbull. Turnbull just using that size. And Duncan going to bring it down the floor now as Chase Hembry has checked into the game. Manley going to fire up a three, a little long on that one as Hembry can't pull in the rebound off his hands out of bounds. Chanute looks really good when they're forcing that ball inside. Rhett Smith gives it in to Peter. Peter wanted nothing to do with that three-point shot. And they'll swing it back around. Smith driving baseline, it wasn't there. Well, it looks very good for Chanute here in this one. Much better than what we saw Tuesday night in Altamont. Absolutely. Ball nearly stolen away by Rhett Smith. Tried to throw it off the defender, but ball stayed in bounds. Spin inside and ball thrown out of bounds. So 
with Chanute with the basketball. If you're watching the live stream, police presence still strong. <laughs> Duncan going to fire the deep three. Jordan Duncan didn't have that one. And Seamster, they're going to say he was already out of bounds. Tried to throw it off the defender, but I think they're going to say Seamster was already out of bounds. Good effort there from Caden Seamster. Ryan Carew going to bring the ball down the floor. He'll be guarded by Duncan. He'll get it into Chronister. And they'll go inside to Hembry. Hembry trying to use his size, but not there. Chanute comes away with it. In 22-18, Blue Comets up four. This feels a lot like the girls game. Chanute just barely leading the whole time. Yeah, it does feel that way, but with not as many fouls. <laughs> Fair. Duncan going to try another three, and just a little long on that one as well. Rebound fought for. Pittsburgh going to come down with it. Carew to bring it up the floor once again for Pittsburgh. Rhett Smith nearly stealing it away. Love the aggression there. Hastings going to fire up the three-point shot. He airballs that one as Manley is going to bring it in for the rebound. Manley pushing the other way. Into the hands of Rhett Smith, fires to Duncan in the three in the corner for the three. Jordan Duncan still can't hit that three. Jordan Duncan has just been a hair off four or five times now, but he's a sharpshooter, and once he finds that stroke, look out, Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh wants a timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Blue Comets leading by four. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School. 2.15 to play in the second quarter. Blue Comets leading by four, 22 to 18. Purple Dragons with the basketball. Mason English has checked back into the game. Pittsburgh gonna see if they can go on a little run with English. English aggressively going to the basket. He's cut off by Manley. Cross court pass into the hands of Carew. As they go inside to Carew, and he gets the layup to go. 22-20. Blue Comets up two. Henson with it now. Gives it off to Peter. Peter driving baseline. Ball swatted out of his hands, and now Peter going to go up to the basket. Man, Brax Peter playing much bigger than he is. Gets the layup to go. Extends the lead back out to four, 24-20. 90 seconds to play here in the first half. He just threw that one up and said, I hope this goes in. Hey, it worked, didn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> English driving, now picks up his dribble, gives back to Chronister. Back to English. English, nice pass on the inside. And Carew now with it. Now they throw it up top, and that's going to go back court. And that'll be a turnover. Possession back to the Blue Comets with a minute seven to play. Another substitution as Jaden Brown, a young freshman checking into the game for the first time. We go into the corner to Henson, now to Stevenson. Stevenson, left-handed layup, a little far away from the basket for that shot, I believe, but tried to make it happen. Going coast to coast, English couldn't get the shot to go. And ball now on the floor. Players fighting for it. And we got a timeout, Chanute. Great job. Brax Peter going down to the ground to bring that one in. And Coach Crabtree taking the timeout. We'll take 30 seconds with them. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
back here at Pittsburgh High School. 48.8 seconds to play here in the first half. Blue Comets holding on to a slim four-point lead. As Blue Comets will inbound the basketball. It'll be Parker Manley now giving it back to Rhett Smith. Rhett going to bring the ball up the floor. Rhett being guarded by Chronister, 23 on 23. They give it off to Manley, nearly thrown out of bounds. Parker able to bring it in. Picks up his dribble. He's got to go somewhere with it. Gives it off to Rhett. Rhett to Stevenson. Elliott Stevenson is trying to avoid the defender as Rhett Smith brings it in. Chanute doing a good job running this clock off. He'll give it off to Stevenson. Stevenson on the left wing. Being guarded closely now to Manley. Manley gives it in to Smith. Smith fighting for it. Fires up a shot. Rebound fought for. Stevenson with it. Throws up junk and it won't go. But nonetheless, Pittsburgh doesn't even get a look at it. So at the end of the first half, our score is Chanute 24, Pittsburgh 20. We'll send it back to the studio for four minutes. When we come back, we will have your Row Motors and Trailer Sales halftime show. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here in Z95.3.
back back here at Pittsburgh High School. And hey, they do halftime right here. Chanute leading 24 to 20 at the break. And they've got a $100 giveaway. I believe it's supposed to be for a three point shot, but. Hey, thanks for turning me on, fella. <laughs> Whoa. The young, the young man was nine years old, too. Nine years old, and they let the young man shoot from the free throw line. They gave him three chances. I mean, they had some fun with it. Hey, that's, now some students are shooting threes. That's because, probably why they're not on the basketball team. <laughs> this guy has a racing helmet on, helmet and all, and no, can't go. But anyway, they have fun here. They, they used to have a. They used to have a thing here where it was like you paid in a dollar and you went and shot from half court. Like everybody that paid in a dollar got to shoot. And you got and a if you made it, liter, it, well, right? no, if you made it, you got the money. Oh, really? Well, the other show used to do it with a, with a two liter. Well, it's I don't think it's from half court. I think it's a three point shot. Man, they're having all kinds of fun over here. But nonetheless. Might as well. Oh, huh? this guy's got the Royals Mahomes jersey on. So, yep. Never mind. <laughs> Missed everything. <laughs> I won't say nothing there. We'll let that go. Anyway, Jay, uh, Blue Comets up 24-20 here at half. How do we get here, man? Uh, Seamster has six, Stevenson four, Duncan four, uh, Smith six, and Peter four. Uh, for them, Hastings has three, Turnbull seven, English six, and Carew four. Uh, Chanute is shooting 40% from the floor. O of 12 from three-point range. For who? Chanute. Uh, an 0 of 4 from the free throw line. Uh, Pittsburgh is shooting 42% from the floor, 25% uh, from three, and 25% from the line. That shouldn't have happened. So, in other words, there's some really bad shooting in this game. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I didn't listen to ar hardly any of that. Oh, uh, you never listened to me. It's not you. I was just watching what's going on out here on the court because this is awesome. Jason They're just like letting people shoot random shots for a hundred dollars. What about Mrs. Harry? I love this. Every every school should do this. Just raise money. Like the the, the athletic director here um, at Pittsburgh High School. Is, is he listed on here? No, he's not. Is he? No, I don't believe so. He's not listed on the roster. Uh, he's just like passing the ball to people in the crowd and telling them, hey, if you make a shot from where you're at. Now the athletic trainer is going to shoot one. Ooh, just short. He was closer than most people were. That was fun, but nobody made a shot. Nobody wins $100. I think by default we get the money. Oh, absolutely. No. <laughs> It'd be nice, wouldn't it? But, uh, yeah, yeah, so two and a half minutes to go here until we start the third quarter. Chanute, again, like you went through the stats, not exactly a pretty game, but defensively both teams have played pretty well, and that has led to the poor shooting. And there hasn't been an easy shot put up, I don't think, by either team because the defense has been so well. No, but I, I think when Chanute goes inside with the ball, they're just a little bit better. When they go inside? Inside, yes. Yeah, I mean, while I agree with you, uh, that's going to be tougher because Jackson Turnbull can play. He didn't play a great first half, but that young man can play. Excuse me. You feel like you're potentially playing with fire the more you go in at him. Uh, you're, you're, I think it's a good night to have that inside-out game going. Like you mentioned, the three-point shooting, 0 of 12? 0 of 12. 0 of 12. Shoot or shoot. This is a team that they like to shoot from the outside. Keep shooting. I'm, I'm a believer in that with this team. Inside out, drive and kick, and some of these shots are going to fall. The fact that Chanute has a four-point lead and shot 0 of 12 from the three-point line tells me that they're in a very good spot here for the second half and have the potential to break this one open. Because they keep going inside. Well, because they so. keep going inside. That's going to wrap up our Row Motors and Trailer Sales Halftime Show. We'll send it back to the studio for one minute. When we come back, we'll have third quarter. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
Back to action here in Pittsburgh. Turnbull misses a shot. And Chanute quickly going the other way with it. Rhett Smith, numbers not really in his favor. His shot blocked down from behind. And Pittsburgh is going to go the other way with it. English puts up the floater on the baseline. Nothing there. And Henson going to come away with it. Henson gives it off to Seamster, who will give it back to Lars Custer, who sat out pretty much the entire second quarter, if it not the entire second I quarter. I think he set the entire second quarter. Seamster on the inside, shot won't go, rebound to Pittsburgh. <laughs> English tried the underhand pass and it went right into the hands of Stevenson. It's a wild game right now. A lot of hustle by both teams. A lot here. of hustle and a lot of ugly basketball being played. I was going to tell the AD I could have made that shot from here, but <laughs> maybe this end. Absolutely, this end. Inbound thrown away. English comes away with it, going coast to coast. They're going to get a foul on Seamster. There was about 20% the amount of contact from Seamster to English as there was from Baker to Lars Custer at halftime of the Labette game Tuesday night. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they were both fouls. And the Seamster picks up his second. Chanute crowd disagreeing with that call, it appears. As Rhett Smith comes away with it. And we're going to call a tie-up. As English... And Rhett Smith, definitely no love there. <laughs> Keep an eye on that one. Evidently not, because English is, seems like he's a little upset. Well, he's in a very an emotional player. And as much as I'd like to, that is not in a very positive way most of the time. As I mentioned, he likes to ask for calls quite a bit as he steals that one away. And he loses the ball. Now he's on the ground holding his hip. Hopefully he's all right as his own player knocked him down and Rhett Smith lays it in for two for Chanute. Blue Comets back up four. English head down, just paying no attention to his teammates. And all of a sudden the hip, 100%. And they get it into Solace and he misses that shot. Rebound goes to the Blue Comets. Custer coming this direction with it. Again, Blue Comets leading 26-22 as we cross the six-minute mark of the third quarter. Stevenson thought about the three-point shot, decided against it. Now he'll swing it over to Henson. Henson goes inside. Rhett Smith, guarded by English. Cross-court pass to Stevenson. Thought about the three again. Stevenson goes inside, hits the deck. And Elliott Stevenson going to go to the free-throw line to shoot two. Now charged to Turnbull. Pittsburgh coach Jordan Woods not agreeing with who the foul was called on. I'm beginning to see where Mason English gets his theatrical attitude from. <laughs> I, I saw that in the first half. Stevenson hits both free throws. It's the lead out to six, 28-22. English going to bring the ball up the floor for the Purple Dragons. He'll be guarded by Custer. Custer with those two fouls. They kick it into the corner to Hastings. He close out D there from Stevenson. Hastings trying to drive baseline. Gets it into Turnbull. And Rhett Smith able to come away with it. I think the Pitts Pittsburgh crowd wanted to travel there. Pittsburgh relies too much on just believing where everybody's going to be when Chanute's playing great defense against it. And Chanute... <laughs> Essentially making the same mistake on this end now as English quick to the basket, throws up a shot. That one won't go. Salas the offensive rebound, and his follow-up attempt will go. English staring down the official, wanting to know where the call was. It's because he threw up a shot six feet from the basket that ended up nowhere near the rim. 
The young man better be careful. Them officials will get tired of that. I would be. Seamster to the bucket. Great find there by Parker Henson. English with it, 4.25 to play in the third quarter. Blue Comets up six. English being doubled, has to get rid of it. Gives it over to Cronister. Now inside, way over the head of Turnbull. Chanute going coast to coast. Rhett Smith, and he's fouled. Good job by Lars Custer finding Rhett Smith. <laughs> Lars told Rhett Smith, hey, just lay that up, man. I want the assist. <laughs> right? Free throw rattles in. Ryan Carew checking back in. As Giovanni Salas will check out. And free throw attempted here for Rhett Smith. And that one rattles out. Rebound fought for. That will go off the hand of Turnbull. Out of bounds. Possession to stay with Chanute. You know, you said something about it. He wanted the assist there. Um, I'll come back to that. Inbound. Brought in by Seamster. Now they'll give it over to Stevenson. They'll set it up for Henson. Henson going to fire the three-point shot. And I told you, Parker Henson drains the three. And the bench fired up over here for Chanute. Shoot or shoot, Jay. Shoot or shoot. <laughs> I'll give you that one. But uh, how, how have we a Phyllis Taylor this lead? It's a 10-point lead, and Mason English, a shooter as well. And he gets the big three-point shot, cuts the lead back down to seven, and we've got a timeout on the floor by Pittsburgh. It'll be a full one-minute timeout. We'll take the 60 seconds with them. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School after the big three-point shot made from Parker Henson, then answered from Mason English. It's 34-27, just over three and a half to play here in the third quarter. Lars Custer with it as Chanute breaks the trap there. Duncan with it, gets it in the corner to Henson. Henson going to fire another and can't get that one to go as he misses everything. And ball's going to go, I believe, out of bounds into the hands of Pittsburgh. And something on the floor, maybe. Huh. Someone throwing something on the floor? Yeah. That could potentially be dangerous. Apparently, I'll answer that, I guess. Somebody throwing candy on the floor. <laughs> they announced him to announce, please don't throw candy on the floor. He made it a fun, fun thing. English driving, kicks it out. Three-point rattled in and out. Turnbull comes down with the rebound, and he goes hard to the basket, and he'll be fouled. And Jackson Turnbull going to go to the line to shoot two. Parker Henson, his second personal foul. 
Parker Henson picks up the foul. Anyway, what I was going to say earlier, if if you feel that you you pass the ball and you get fouled, and the basket doesn't go in, but you shoot free throws, should you not get the assist if they make it? If they make both free throws. Yes, should you not? Yeah. Yeah. It's a conversation for another day. All right. Turnbull splits the free throws, cuts the lead down to six. Under three to play in the third. It's 34-28. Lars Custer with it. He'll direct the offense patiently. The look on his face right now. I think that's just his face. Oh, okay. <laughs> One redhead to another. I think that's just his face, man. We, we, we make weird faces, all right? He'll dribble it back out. Gives it to Rhett Smith, who he'll just put it in his pocket for a moment. Let things reset. They go inside. Kick it out to Duncan. Now back to Rhett Smith. 30-second possession so far. Yet to be a shot. Henson with it. Gives it to Seamster in the corner. Now they'll give it back up top to Lars Custer. Rhett Smith with it now. Left-handed dribble into the corner to Seamster. And Seamster going to dribble back out. Chanute wants to hold for the last shot this quarter. Oh. 1.55 to play in the quarter. <laughs> yeah, that was oh out of me. <laughs> I've seen crazier things. Lars gets it back to Rhett Smith. Great job of keep away. As they go inside, Seamster lays it in for two. Great job as that was a one minute, 12 second possession that resulted in two points and an eight point lead. Tough call there up top. And Parker Henson picks up his third. Henson has done such a great job on Turnbull. As Crabtree looked towards his bench, but not sure who to put in as it's gonna be a size issue. Seems like Peter would be the option, but we'll see where they go. English driving to the basket, and an offensive foul. A great job, Jordan Duncan taking the charge. And English slow to get up. Elliot Stevenson checking in. English very frustrated. His yeah, second he's... charge of the game. Stevenson with it. As he hesitates. Gives it off to Duncan. Duncan misses the lay-in. Oh, would have been a perfect story from one end to the other. Duncan misses the layup. English step back. Now hesitates. Puts up the shot. That one won't go. And seems they're going to let that one bounce out of bounds. Give everybody a quick breather here. Inbound goes to Lars Custer. He'll bring it up the floor. He's being guarded by Carew. Now he gives off to Rhett Smith. Rhett crosses the timeline. 55 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Schnute leads by eight. Now to Seamster. Over to Duncan. Swing it around oh, to Rhett Smith. As English nearly got a hand on that one. It's going to say that he almost got his hand on that. Be careful. Very quick hands for English. Here we go inside. Shot put up. And great job by Elliot Stevenson to finish. Puts Blue Comets up 10. And English just lowering his shoulder into Lars Custer. Throws the ball away. Clearly frustrated. Lars Custer now going to bring the ball up the floor. Lars looking to go coast to coast. Throws it away into the hands of English. English looking to go the other way. And Seamster just going to let him go. Gives up the easy two. Smart move by Seamster there. Yeah, no reason to pick up a cheap foul there. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Blue Comets leading 38-30. We'll send it back to the studio for one minute. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
back here at Pittsburgh High School. Start of the fourth quarter. Blue Comets leading this one 38 to 30. The defense has just been top notch all night long. <clears throat> Possession will favor Pittsburgh here to start the fourth quarter. They'll look to get it in to Mason English. They get it into English. He'll be guarded by Custer. Blue Comets holding on to an eight point lead here as we start the fourth. Hastings with it. Now back to English. English driving baseline. Passes it over to Carew, nearly stolen away. Now Carew driving out to Hastings. Hastings three point shot. One rattles in and out off the glass and back in. Cuts the lead down to five. 38 33, seven and a half to play. Custer crosses the timeline with Carew riding on his shoulder. Ball nearly stolen away. What, what is he talking about? Man, the coach begs for everything. <laughs> <laughs> English clearly knocked that out of bounds. We're trying to say it went off of Chanute. Duncan with it in the backcourt. He'll bring it up the floor. Being guarded by Hastings. Now to Rhett Smith, who's guarded by English. Duncan swings it around to Stevenson. Stevenson driving baseline. And somebody other than Stevenson had to pick that up. Good job by Seamster to go and get that. Yeah, he turned around and said, oh, I got to get that. Rhett Smith crossover dribble. English defending. Now over to Stevenson. Another long possession here. Been 40 seconds for the Blue Comets. Get it over to Smith. Smith driving baseline. And I'm going to say he stepped on the baseline. The Blue Comets leading by five, but have yet to do much this quarter to make themselves feel comfortable. English with it. Gives it over to Hastings. Back to Cronister up top. Turnbull on the inside. Turnbull nowhere to go. Ooh. The fouls on the floor. They're going to get Rhett Smith with the foul. That'll be his first, the fourth team foul. Pittsburgh with three team fouls. So both teams still a couple away from free throws. Oh, Turnbull went up for the dunk. Rhett Smith, man, just palm that ball. And they're going to call a foul on Rhett Smith. Great job by Rhett Smith challenging that dunk attempt. If Turnbull's successful on that, it's a huge momentum shift. So even with the foul call, although it seemed very clean from here. It looked clean. Even with the foul call, it, it's, it's good. You stopped the momentum. Turnbull hits both, makes it a one possession game, 38-35. Henson going to check in. Stevenson will check out. We'll get it into Rhett Smith. <clears throat> Be guarded by English. Smith has not backed away from this challenge all night long. He gives it off to Custer. Good defense there by English. Henson with it. Looking for some help. And it's Somehow going to end up in the hands of Pittsburgh. Chanute offense has disappeared. And got a tie up. Man, Coach Crabtree was yelling timeout. I know we're close to him, but. Very physical, emotional game going on right now. And Lars is going to bring this one up one-on-one -on -one with Carew defending very physically. And C Coach Crabtree finally taking a timeout. He wanted the foul call. I thought they were going to call the foul after he was begging they, for uh, yeah. it. But 
nonetheless, so get a timeout by Chanute. We'll take 30 seconds with them. Blue Comets leading by three. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School, 5.39 to play in regulation. Blue Comets holding on to a 38-35 lead here. Correct me if I'm wrong, 5-0 Pittsburgh here yeah, in the fourth. Yep, uh, yep, 5-0. We need, we need a basket. Chanute definitely does need a spark of offense here. We, uh, we, we haven't even got a shot up here in the fourth quarter. All right, that's... A bit concerning. Well, I, I know I'm just full of good news. Yeah. Inbound will go to Kester in the backcourt. He'll cross the timeline, being guarded by Carew. Carew reaching in, we'll kick it out to. I couldn't see that far in the corner to tell you the truth. It was Henson, I believe, but now they'll swing it back around. Over to Duncan, now they get it to Smith on the right wing. Smith being guarded closely by Hastings. Yeah, Pittsburgh's gonna guard this close all night as long as the officials continue to let them. And I mean, hands on his hip. Right. Now ball stolen away by Pittsburgh as English goes the other way. Shot won't go, but Turnbull there to follow. It's a one point Chanute lead. Well, Shadutes got away from what was working earlier. They were forcing the ball inside. It was working. Lars Custer trying to get inside. Finally gets the call. Jordan Woods doesn't like it. Carew gets charged with the foul. And that'll send Lars Custer to the line to shoot two. It's one of those ones where... Pittsburgh can't believe the call. I don't blame them because they've been letting them play tackle football out here. <laughs> Parker Manley is going to check in for the first time here in the second half. And the free throw rattles in and out. So a two-point lead for Chanute, 39-37. English quickly with it the other way. Tries to force one inside. It's batted around right into the hands of English, and it falls in. The game's tied. Duncan with it. Now back to Lars. 4.20 to play here in this one. It's tied up at 39 apiece. Lars breaks the timeline. Gets it over to Henson. Now in the corner to Manley. Manley driving baseline. Gets it over to Duncan. Duncan to Lars. Lars going to fire up the three. It won't go. Rebound fought for. It's Pittsburgh. English going to be patient with it. Chanute has led almost the entirety of this game until Pittsburgh just recently tied it. English tried to drive. He's cut off. They get it inside to Turnbull. And Duncan just takes it out of his hands. Great job by Jordan Duncan. They get it up to Henson, bounce pass to Manley. Manley can't field it cleanly. Sit out to Henson, and he pump fakes a three. Seamster going all the way to the bucket. Can't get the kiss off the glass to go. Chanute's got to get back on defense. 3.20 to play in this one. English puts up the shot. And a foul. That whistle was a little late. We'll get the third on Lars. Lars asking and <laughs> Crabtree asking Lars, did you hit him? He said, no, I didn't hit him. <laughs> uh, 
English gets the first free throw to go. He's got one more. First lead in a long time for Pittsburgh. Second free throw won't go. And we're going to get a foul on Pittsburgh. That'll be Jackson Turnbull. It's the third on Turnbull. <laughs> Turnbull's just so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I did not almost shank that young man down. Yeah. Had him wrapped up, man. It was a DN. That was a great move, but. Lars Custer with it being guarded by Ryan Carew. Blue Comets trailing by one. Duncan with it, looking for somewhere to go. Guarded by English. Now Henson in the corner. If he picks up his dribbles, got to go somewhere with it. And we got a timeout. Uh, it's Devin Crabtree. The internal clock went off. He smartly uses that 30-second timeout. We'll take 30 seconds with him. Blue Comet's trail by one. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Two forty-eight to play here in the fourth quarter. Blue Comets trailing by one. Duncan to inbound. They get it into Seamster. Seamster shot won't go, but he's fouled. Great play design. Man, that ball just wouldn't fall down. Caden Seamster going to get two from the line. Joey Cronister, the guilty party, on the foul. First free throw for Seamster. Man, climbed out just like his shot did. So Seamster now an opportunity to tie it with this free throw. Big free throw right here. Very big. Shots up, and that one goes. We're tied at 40. 2.47 to play in the fourth quarter. English with it. Duncan defending. Man, English crazy with those elbows. And misses the shot. Good rebound by Manley. Lars Custer going to bring it up the floor. Crossover dribble. Good screen set by Seamster. Now over to Henson. Henson, three-point shot, and it goes! Parker Henson, ice in his veins! Three-point lead for the Blue Comets. Timeout on the floor. It's a full 60 second timeout. 43-40 Blue Comets, 2.15 to play. We'll send it back for a minute. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here, Pittsburgh High School, 43-40. Blue Comets up three, 2.15 to play in the fourth quarter. English going to bring the ball up the floor for Pittsburgh. Being guarded by... Well, I guess he gives off to Turnbull. Now inside, two-point shot put up and missed. 
from English. Good defense there by Custer. 150 to play. Here in this one, Lars gonna bring the ball up the floor. He crosses the timeline. Big. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a good shot. I can't see anything, but. I cannot see a Hins thing either. Henson with it. Tries to give it back to Seamster. Duncan with it. Duncan gives it over to Henson. Got to settle down, settle down. Minute 26 to play. Big offensive possession here for Schnute. Lars Custer with it up top. Gives it off to Manley. Now they'll swing it around to Duncan. They go inside to Lars. Lars wide open under the basket. Lars Custer lays it in for two. Five point lead for the Blue Comets. 105 to play. Deep three from English. That one won't go. Seems through the rebound. And a quick foul on English. And English running his mouth, getting away with it. He says more on the floor than, never mind. <laughs> the fourth foul on Mason English. Big three free throws here for Seamster. Seamster going to get a one and one here. Right. Chanute deciding to clear the lane, trusting Seamster. First free throw, that's missed. So the lead sticks at five. Yeah, but by, by clearing the lane, they didn't give a run out. All the way to the basket. English can't get the shot to go. Turnbull shot blocked down. And Turnbull just lowering his shoulder into Seamster. How is there nothing called there, wow. guys? Holy cow. Turnbull yelling at Seamster. Seamster put his hands up saying, all right, we're good, we're good. Turnbull just lowering his shoulder right into Seamster. Wow. Turnbull at the line, shooting two. First free throw rattles around and in. I feel like we're in for an interesting 48 seconds. I believe so. Second free throw from Turnbull. That one rattles around and in. Three-point game, timeout Pittsburgh. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll send it back to the studio for 30 seconds as well. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3. Back here at Pittsburgh High School, 45-42. You gave me a weird look. 45-42. Oh. <laughs> Blue Comets leading by three with the basketball. 48 seconds to play here in this one. Yeah. It's been. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's been back and forth here in the final minute or so. Pittsburgh momentarily taking that one point lead in a 5-0 run from Chanute. Manley will inbound. Trying to get it into Custer. And timeout, Chanute. As Manley was unable to get the ball in. Yeah, he had the whole baseline to work with. I don't, I don't know why he didn't move there. Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead. We'll take 30 seconds. That way we don't miss any action. Send it back to studio for 30. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
back here. Still 48 seconds to play after the timeout. Blue Comets up three. Manley will inbound once again. An official telling him, you've got the entire baseline to run. And Chanute out of timeouts. I think I believe Pittsburgh is too. And they get it in quickly to Henson. And he'll get it up to Seamster. Seamster nearly double dribbled. Ooh, actually, he might have got away with a double dribble. They give it up to Seamster. They trap. Now to Lars. Lars being doubled and then almost triple teamed. And he's got to get rid of it. Gets it over to Manley. Manley gets the ball nearly ripped away. And great job by Lars to hold it. Now gets it over to Henson. Now in the corner to Duncan. Duncan smartly not shooting. Back up top to Lars. And call a foul. Good night. Holy cow. And they're going to call an intentional foul? I believe he did. Ooh, that's tough for Pittsburgh, man. That's a tough call for Pittsburgh. I mean, they were just letting them maul Lars Custer. I mean, they that, mauled everyone that there. That could potentially beautiful. give Chanute the game. They just mauled Kester. First free throw up and in. Makes it a two-possession lead. Rhett Smith going to check in for the final 13.4. Parker Manley checking out. Uh, evidently, we have a problem with a parent or something. Uh, yep, they are removing a fan. from the game here in Pittsburgh. So Lars Custer, one more free throw. We, Chanute leads by four. Chanute will get the basketball back as well. Second free throw from Lars, and he drains it. And Chanute will inbound on the sideline, leading by five, 13.4 to play. Officials telling the Chanute bench to sit, as they are supposed to sit. Lars gets the inbound, and now the foul call comes. As 3.1 seconds go off the clock, Lars Custer going to get an opportunity to get a one and one or two more. Ninth team foul, so it will be a one and one opportunity here for Lars. Chanute clearing the lane. Front end of the one and one is missed by Lars. And English quickly going the other way with it. English hesitates, leans into a three-point shot, and he gets it to go. We got a timeout, Pittsburgh, with 2.7 seconds to play. The score 47-45, right? Yes. Okay, they didn't put it on the board. Throw it long. Is it a two or a three? Three. Throw it long. They called it a three-point basket. There was a discussion whether it was a two or a three. They did rule it was a three-point basket. So it is a two-point game. Uh, Jay saying to throw it long. And we in our in our we are in a timeout, excuse me, but gonna keep things here for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, Jay says throw it long. And I would have. But you, ha somebody has to catch it. Uh, all it has to do is be touched till the clock starts. It has to be touched. Correct. And I would have Seamster throw it if it was me. I mean, arguably, I would just try to get it in quickly and then just, like, lob it up into the air down to this. That, that does too. But, but if you happen to, to drop it and they pick it up and chuck it up and it goes in, then, they, then you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
man, they are taking this one serious. I feel like they're concerned there could be some issues after this game. Yeah, we might have a quick post game. So inbound goes to Duncan, and Duncan is immediately bumped, although eight-tenths of a second ran off the clock. I'll tell you what, for Pittsburgh being the home team, that was a really quick eight-tenths of a second. No, no help from your home timekeeper on that one. <laughs> no, not at all. Duncan will get two. One free throw makes you feel okay. Two free throws makes you feel really good. Two makes you feel invincible right here. Duncan's first one oh rattles out and missed. Oh. You missed on purpose here? No. You need a three-point lead. Duncan at the line. Second free throw. And he missed it. And we'll see if they add time to the clock. They're going to have to. It was yeah. So Stevenson checking in for Chanute. It is another full timeout, but again. I'm Lord have mercy, how many timeouts does Pittsburgh have? I thought they had a few left. I believe they said 1.2 on the clock. I could be incorrect. They're going to put what on the clock? I believe he said 1.2. 1.2 on the clock. And they're throwing, are they, are they throwing in from the side? No, they're throwing in from the baseline, correct? Yeah, it should be baseline. I would put... Somebody guarding the throw, and then everybody else deep. Is it baseline? Yes. How's that rule work? He's standing on the baseline. Oh, so. I know he's standing down there. I hope it's on the other end if it's, like, below the free throw line extended or three-point yeah, line extended. I think it's three-point line or free throw line extended. So 1.2 seconds remaining on the clock. And do not foul. So Dan Hastings to inbound. Henson guarding the inbounder. Hastings going to throw to midcourt. It was tipped. And Elliott Stevenson brings it in. And that's how this one will end. Chanute 47, Pittsburgh 45. Blue Comets get a road victory. Great job. Write that score down, Jay. <laughs> and a big road win again for the Blue Comets. Final score, Chanute 47. Pittsburgh 45. We'll send it back to the studio for five minutes. When we come back, we'll have your Sealy Plumbing post game show and an opportunity to talk with head coach Devin Crabtree. You're listening to Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.
back here at Chanute, oh, Pittsburgh High School, not Chanute High School. We'll be there next week, Coach. What a win tonight, 47-45, Chanute victorious over Pittsburgh. Big road win, big bounce back win after Tuesday night. And I've got head coach Devin Crabtree here with me. Coach, a night that was filled with up and down, full speed action, people getting thrown out, cops involved, <laughs> yeah. candy on the floor, <laughs> and you guys fought through it all and knocked off the preseason league favorite, Pittsburgh, on their floor. And the emotion on the bench, the the smiles from the players, the coaches, the I saw Coach Fox, he was the first one to greet yeah, you guys yeah. over here on the bench as soon as you guys were done giving handshakes. Man, you could tell yeah, everybody – on this Chanute side, wanted this game and wanted it bad. Yeah, no doubt. It's uh, they're obviously they're an incredibly talented team, and to get an opportunity to play, we, you know, we always feel lucky we get a chance to play them as a 5A school, and just always at the top of our league, and to come over here and steal one on the road, man, it's really exciting. It's been no secret that you're not the tallest team in the world. Right. This is it seems like every game, Fort Scott's got a tall kid. Lebec County's got a tall kid. You come here tonight, and they've got Jackson Turnbull, who plays like one of the best bigs around. If yeah. not, I mean, he's, yeah, he's a good player. He's a stud. Yeah. And then they also had uh, some other kids, Solace, great size. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, Mason English can jump out of the gym and one of the best players in the league. Yeah, no doubt. And you guys just, especially with Turnbull inside, you use different guys around him, uh, just had him flustered all night um, to the point where – Jordan Duncan, who's 5'8", I'm 5'8", I know what 5'8 looks like, <laughs> yeah. just ripping the ball right yeah, away from him like yeah, it's nothing. Play, I mean, that, that was just a great job all night just being in his head, and you could tell him in English all night just completely frustrated. Yeah, I mean, that was the goal. You know, we knew who their guys were, and that was coming in, just trying to throw different things at them, trying to get the ball out of their hands, make them take tough shots, and, man, guys just did a great job of executing a game plan, and it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So Jay told me at halftime you guys were 0 of 12 from behind the arc we in knew, the first half. We knew it was a struggle. And of course, Jay, Jay, Jay's Jay's old school. I'm we're we're close in age, coach, mm -hmm. and uh, so we're we're still we got that new school age a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And Jay said, "Man, they need to go inside and attack the basket." <laughs> I said, "Jay, it's not the way this team plays. They got to go inside and kick it out. This yep. team, they're full of shooters, shooters shoot." And Parker Henson hit that big three, and I went a little unprofessional, and I yelled at Jay over here, and I said, <laughs> I told you so. And that seemed like the spark at the time. Parker Henson hit that big three, yeah. and uh, Pittsburgh made their little run, even took a one-point lead. Yep. But, man, the, the energy just never stopped. Even when Pittsburgh made that run, you guys went scoreless, it felt like, for most of the first, the fourth quarter. Yeah. But never, never quit. Just that give up wasn't there. The resilience you guys showed, it, it was incredible. W what is it that gives you guys that want to just keep going when things are looking gloomy? Well, I think these guys are just believing in each other. And, I mean, I think we were probably the only team over here in, in the state that thought we would come and win this game. And I think just believing in that and, and knowing, that we have a, knowing that we have a chance to win late in the game and, and being able to execute. They just, they just believed in it and, and did a really good job, man. So free throws were big all night. Yeah. Tell Jordan to hit one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but outside of that, nothing to get – he played a heck of a game. We yeah, mentioned him even did. on the defensive yeah, end. Yeah. But oh, yeah. overall, and I'll even go back to the girls' game, both girls and guys, I don't know what you guys are doing there in practice, but free throws tonight were big for both teams. It, it just seemed like that was the difference in, in the two-point game. Every point is extremely important. Yeah, no uh, doubt. It, it, was, it was an impressive showing here tonight, Coach. I know – I assume you, you got over Tuesday's game quickly as that was a tough loss. Oh, yeah. You got to yeah. do the same thing with this. As big of a win as it is. That's right. That's right. Enjoy it. Once, once league play hits, Tuesday. it's just boom, boom, yep, boom. Yep, You've got a game. Quick. You got a game Tuesday against a tough Coffeeville team that last year you struggled with. Yeah. It's a Coffeeville Coffee team. They're not big. No, they aren't. They got one big kid, but after that, not very big. They're a tough matchup for us because they're, they're fast and quick, and, you know, we're not so much, I wouldn't say, but. Uh, we're excited to play it, man. We're, we're excited for sure. They, they, they love to play the game 33-31. Yeah, that, yeah, that's they'll, their they'll style of game. It yeah. it'll, it'll be a tough one Tuesday night. Are you feeling good going into that one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, winning over here, you feel good. I would have felt good had we 
not come out victorious in this one just because I felt like our guys battled and, and you know, would have given ourselves a chance to win. No, feeling good. We're excited to, to you know, move on to the next one. It's nice that you don't get to, uh, you know, you don't have to wait long to play again. So we're looking forward to that. How about uh, scoring points in the third quarter? That, yeah, that was uh, better. Yeah, that, that, that was better tonight. Yeah, it was after a little better. <laughs> after yeah. after the first couple games of the year, a little better. That was yeah, the last thing you better. told me before Christmas. Let's yeah. score some points in the third yeah, quarter. Yeah, that, that's that improved. Yeah, that has that's improved. improved. Let's keep that sure. going, Coach. Yep, Again, yep. Uh, congrats on the big win tonight, and uh, good luck next week. Coffeeville Tuesday, and of course Independence on Friday. Uh, knock off the two Montgomery County schools yeah, in the SEK. Let's do it. We're excited. Let's All do right, it. thanks, Coach. Appreciate you stopping by and having a chat with us. And uh, good luck next week. Yep, thanks for being here. Yep, not a problem. Again, that's head coach Devin Crabtree here, stopping by as always here in our Sealy Plumbing post game show. And we'll get Jay in here real quick, run down some stats before we head out here tonight. As it's been a, a fun one here, but it's also been a long night. And uh, Applebee's has half price appetizers, so you're welcome, Applebee's, for the free advertising. Jay, let's ready? run down some stats before this right. one. Uh, it's over. <laughs> you know I'm going to screw up his name. Help me out. Custer. Man, you did so good last I week. Know, I just know. I just read it. I know. Custer, Custer. he had five. Uh, Seamster had 11. Henson, six. Uh, Stevenson, eight. Duncan, four. Smith, nine. And Peter, four. Balance scoring. Dude, no kidding. Uh, for them, Hastings had six. Salas had two. Turnbull, 13. English had 17 on about 28 shots. Uh, crew had four points, and that's uh, that's how we got here tonight. So as Coach mentioned, he off air, he said, oh, what did we win that game by? It's like, Coach, you're asking the wrong person. I'm horrible. Then I thought about it, 47-45, an unbelievable road win, and as, even as Coach said, uh, they were probably the only ones this side of the state that thought they had a chance to win this game, and I knew coming in, I mean, they, there's games that I go to and I'm like, all right, we got this. And there's games I'm like, it's gonna be tough. And then there's games where I'm like, all right, we need a miracle. Well, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't miracle stage for this one, but I knew it was gonna be tough. At the same time, I also thought when we went to Altamont Tuesday night, here's a big win, and shows how much I know about basketball because that was a tough one. Lebec County gave him a run Tuesday night, but what a way to bounce back. Got the hiccups over here. Big win, big win. But what a way to bounce back and get a victory here tonight. As Coach said, against a 5A opponent, and it's just going to get tougher from here out. As he, again, Coffeeville Tuesday night. Coffeeville not something we've seen this year. They're, they've got one big kid, and after that, just a bunch of small guards. But last year just caused fits for this Chanute team as they just bring kids in nonstop, play defense all night long. And Coffeeville's going to be all right if the game's in the 30s. I mean, that's that's their style of game. So it'll be a tough one. Tuesday night, then we'll get Independence Friday, and then after that. Is that at Independence? No. Oh. It is in Chanute. We're in Chanute for a while now. I think we've got five straight in Chanute, and then. Maybe I should get a job there. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Coffeeville Independence, Ralph Miller, three home games for the boys. And then we'll be on the road at Paola, I believe, that first, I think it might even be a Monday after, Monday or Tuesday. It's a quick turnaround, I know that. But nonetheless, big win here tonight against Pittsburgh. Girls winning earlier tonight, 49-39, their first win of the season. And the boys knocking off Pittsburgh by a score of 47-45 as they move to 4-1 and one on the season and 2-1 and one in SEK league play one loss again Tuesday night to Lebec County, the one that they'll get an opportunity to make up for here in a couple weeks. So uh, things looking good for Chanute Blue Comet basketball. Jay. Absolutely. What Keep you got? pounding the ball inside. <laughs> what you got? Pound Free. the ball inside. Free throw line. That's it. That's it. All right. That's going to do it here tonight. Again, thank you to all of our sponsors for allowing us to do these games over the air and via live stream. Without you, these games are not possible. Big thanks to Alyssa back in the studio. Thank you. We did have one little technical difficulty, but you guys probably didn't even know it because Alyssa called it out, got us back on the air during a commercial break, and we went smooth sailing from there. So thank you, Alyssa. You're doing a great job back in the studio with us. Jay, it's been a fun night here in Pittsburgh, but half-price appetizers start eight minutes in. It's going to take us longer than that to pack everything up. So I say we get on out of here. Absolutely. In this first week of January the right way. And 
uh, look forward to Tuesday night. Again, we'll be on the air Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, as your Chinook Blue Comets host Coffeeville Games at Home. As Coach Fox reminded you, come out, support both the girls and the guys team. We want a big showing. If you can't make it, again, you can tune in 95.3 FM or on our live stream at KINZ.biz. He's Jay McGeary. I'm Brett Shields. Thank you for listening to Chinook Blue Comet Basketball right here on Z95.3.